All right, so we should be live right about now, giving thanks for everything that has been happening. <sighs> Taking a quick breath for a moment, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started in about three minutes. Let's get some tunes happening here. You're listening to Meta featuring Sunny Nice. Let's start it that way since it's definitely relevant this evening. Let's go. Modern life plantation, planetary devastation, real alien invasion, and we plug to the matrix, frequencies of radiation, hijacked imagination, tell me what we conversating if we ain't talking activation, really ain't no time for waiting, second guess and contemplating, first I gave you prophecy, this is my philosophy, something far from Socrates, yeah I'm chasing sovereignty, but I was born a sovereign being, lived a hundred centuries, booted off a sense of being, really ain't no sense in me, they try to steal my history, Rose above the misery so I can guide my young supremes and I hit the keys with them. All right, and let's go ahead and stretch it out this evening. Stretch, stretch out the mind, stretch out the consciousness. Win. Focus on your dividends. This will make the devil dance. Probably break it from a trance so you can peep a seat with them. Yeah. I feel everybody's ready for that heavy duty metaphysics this evening. Faces all along. Say something. The beats, the beats are coming through fully clear. All right, I saw some stuff saying here. You can change the audio settings. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's just turn those off. Meditation, elevation, inner self for realization, mental wealth for innovation, spiritually been segregated, diamond hits for activation. Let me see that thumb up if that's uh, coming through clear. All right, how they nerfing the sound? We got the acapella flowing though. Yeah, okay, well that's good enough. Let me just play around with this sound a little bit though. Ooh, live performance audio. Should I click that? It's a beta. Let's try that. I don't get that thumbs up yet. Nope. <laughs> All right, so we are getting warmed up this evening. We're going to go ahead and do a few more sound checks since we want to make sure everything is coming through. Clearly, this is movie night. And yeah, you know, how do you come at something like this? So it has definitely been a minute. I have been in the space, but away from the YouTube space a little bit. Let me go ahead and get the cameras on. Hopefully the microphone is at least working. Can we count on the microphone this evening? Wholeness, got that latent space on my chest, was good. All right, so let me just, you know, tuck in because I feel great. Uh, this, these are the times, like I find that so much is happening inside. I haven't even had much opportunity to pay attention to the clown show that is consistently going on. And uh, yeah, at this stage, you could get pretty agitated if you, you know, watch that stuff. So for me, I'm just about enhancing this tribe uh, and those that are here in the space. So I'm going to try to do a few things. I'm still working with the audio and trying to figure out what's going on. Um, it seems like there is a little bit of echo, a little bit of reverb. I tried to get this tightened up earlier, but it has returned. So let's see here. If you're in the chat, all right, um, let me know. Dreaming up. like he's like, man, I knew I could do something in a dream. Okay, well, there we go. So we already, uh, at least the sound is working. So let me go ahead and do this real quick before we let everyone come in with some introductions this evening. And... Um, Okay, so Des, again, like uh, thumbs up, thumbs down on the sound. Okay, good. All right, so thumbs up, thumbs down for those that are on the screen. Let me know what it's sounding like and what's happening with it. Um, I did do a test on our video earlier today, and that came out really good. So hopefully uh, that works, but it's not the, the settings that I'm using now. So let's go ahead and uh, run this one more time and uh, get it warmed up because for me, it's all about coming in this the right way. You want to get off those blocks the right way. You want to get the proper start. Uh, we have all evening, we're going to have a QA. and a We're actually going to share some love with the YouTube tribe today, uh, especially since last time when we got in the space, we, we seemed to get overwhelmed a bit with questions 
and uh, we weren't able to do anything further after four hours. So we was going in. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit this again. Let me see what's up with the screen. Of course, earlier you were listening to Meta and Sunny Nice. And that is a track that you can see here on the QR code. You can also find him on Spotify. So yeah, definitely supporting the brother and uh, sending so much love to everything that they're doing. So let's try this. Yeah, let's try this. All right, so I'll be looking for that, uh, those indicators about what's going on with this, and um, then I'm gonna do a little audio test. All right, let's do this for a minute. All right, I'll give it a try. No, try not. Do or do not. There is no try. Right, so we let it breathe for a minute. Looks like sound is still good enough. Okay, we'll go with that. So this is what we're gonna do so we can go ahead and take off because I know some people are just in the chat like, let's go, let's make it happen. And of course, I'm ready to. So before we do that though, we're gonna celebrate the tribe. We're gonna create a beautiful noise. We're gonna send a vibration across the space, the universe, the cosmos, inner space, all over, netherworld, you name it to all the ancestors, everything that came, everything that ever will be here, everything that ever was and everything that will be. That's what we're doing. We're standing in on that right now. We're standing in on the unity and the love that we've been able to achieve by coming together. We're gonna hear from the tribe just a little bit. If you're in there, just let us know where you're from. Send some wholeness. And yeah, and we'll keep passing it like that. So let us know who you are, where you're at, and send some wholeness, and we're gonna keep it going. So we're gonna open this up for another three or four minutes while I get ahead, go ahead and get a few things done. Let's hear from the tribe. And yeah, let's go with that. So let me set the lines real quick. Let me see. All right, so if you're in the space, you wanna share some love, please do so. My guy, wholeness. This is your boy, Sean. And Oceanside, California, this evening, always ready to build with the tribe. Sending much love, family. Let's have a great one, wholeness. Wholeness, Sean. Wholeness, Sean. Oh, you got it, sis. Wholeness, Sean. Deborah in Rhode Island. Wholeness, everyone. Wholeness, Deborah. This is Caden here in Indiana, ready to make this happen. Let's unite. Wholeness, Kaden. Uh-oh, go ahead, sister. Wholeness, everyone. Wholeness, tribe. 
This is Anana calling in from New York. Oh, Miss Anana, this is Pepe in Atlanta. Excited to be here right that way. Oh, Miss y'all. <laughs> oh, Miss Pepe, how you doing? Shout out to Atlanta. This is Latoya. I am in VA to up to down. Sending that good Venus love. Wholeness. Wholeness, Latoya. I thought it was Pepe. I was about to say wholeness to wholeness, Pepe. I felt you on that last try vibes. Dominic and the Big Apple. I guess I should have known it was you, Toya. I should have known. Yes, you should have. Well, wholeness, Latoya and Dominic. Uh, this is Jody from Australia. So much love, tribe. Oh, and Daisy, <laughs> she's gone. <laughs> Hello, Miss Jody. This is Jeremiah from Kansas City. Hey, Kansas City. Hello, Miss Jeremiah. This is Deandra calling in from Denver, Colorado. Hello, Miss Deandra. This is Jessica. I am in Jacksonville, Florida, right now. Wholeness, Jessica. This is Anne in San Diego, and I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. What's up? <laughs> I'm all, I've been here two weeks, so what's <laughs> up? Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I'm from Chicago. Thank you. Wholeness, everybody. Wholeness, Anne. Wholeness, Jessica. This is Gabrielle coming to you from South Carolina. Wholeness Tribe. Glad to be here. Wholeness, Gabrielle. This is Rochelle calling from Seattle, Washington, and this is my first tribe vibe. So I'm excited to see everyone. <laughs> Wholeness, Rochelle. This is John Tay, pulled over in Boston, Massachusetts. Wholeness tribe. Wholeness, John Tay. Oh, go ahead. Wholeness, John Tay. This is Shanine out of. Austell, Georgia. Wholeness. Wholeness, Janine, who's been here from Chicago. Always a pleasure to be with everyone on a beautiful Friday. Much love. Wholeness Tribe, it's Jesse. Jenny. Sending love from Ontario, Canada. Glad to be here and looking forward to the build. <laughs> Wholeness, everybody. I'm Alyssa. I'm in Willville, Colorado. Usually my dad would be with me right here, but he had an oral surgery today and he can't talk. So he's resting, but we're sending our love. Hello, this is Ebony from North Carolina. I'm at work, so I'm just gonna be listening in. Wholeness Tribe, this is Kathy, my first um, tribe vibe. So super excited to be here and love to everybody. Oh, and I'm, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia right now. Yeah. Wholeness Kathy, welcome to your first live and welcome to your first tribe. Vibe. Good to have you there. I want to send a big bonus and kind of cooperation to everybody here. Um, this feeling that I have right now, it's like waiting to talk and what I feel right now, just how I want to be feeling or how I do feel, and yes, how I want to be feeling all the time about life and about this experience we had. I just pulled over right now and just filled with gratitude right now. Uh, things are just fine and just as they should be. I want to make sure to just give more courage to everybody who just to keep doing their thing. And like we always say, oh, we are a reflection, and this is a big message to myself and everybody out there. And that's me in the background. I'm the Lansdellian. I'm from Lansdale. Oh, I'm not from Lansdale, but I live in Lansdale right now. It's Arnold's Way Vegan Cafe. Um, and I'm just doing my thing. I'm just trying to promote fullness and help everybody ascend. And it's a big thank you to myself and everybody here. Thanks, Seven. You're the big bro in the game, man. Just keep doing your thing. And definitely my mentor, my motivator. And Big up to myself and everybody out there, y'all. You welcome. I'm Supreme, by the way. Supreme Nines. Thank y'all. All right, Supreme. You got something special coming this evening. So thanks for sending that love. Looking forward to it. Honest Kathy and Supreme. This is Rushua from Atlanta, Georgia. Kathy, I'm from Atlanta as well. Supreme, I'm a number nine. So raise your resonation. Honest Tribe.
Ah, I was about to say, yo, Supreme, you might, you might. Man, much love to the fan. Hold this rock soon. Supreme, everybody else. We all so beautiful. I love it. I love it. Wow. Okay. So it's your boy Des here in the coziest of Rikas. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Let's get it going, Trump. Yeah. Solomon, I see you. Danielle, I see you. Oh, man, everybody, I see you. Kathy, I feel you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. Hold this to the family. Let's get it. Let's get it. Love you, homies. Honus Destin, Scion. I'm in uh, Arizona right now. It's been like 1,600 years since I've seen you guys. So I'm glad to be back on and uh, I give thanks. Honus. Gratitude. It's always good to see you back. Um, Honus, 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 Scion. I, hold on, weren't you the one who spit the rap? His eye. Tis I. Yeah, well, yeah, you were going in for like a few minutes. Like, I'm never going to forget that moment. Thank you for sharing that. You Thanks know? for appreciating, man. Appreciate yes. you. Thanks. Much love. The impact is felt. What's going on, everybody? It's come out tapping in from the cold little state of Minnesota. Um, sending love and power to the crew. Getting ready for another beautiful build. On this vast, it's Tony from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. First time joining in. Wholeness, Tony, wholeness fam. This is Courtney's happening from Indonesia. Ready to blast off. Sending love to the family. Happy to be back. Wholeness, oh, Courtney, wholeness, Tony. Welcome. Um, I'm Haley in Ohio, and I'm just thankful to be here. Wholeness, Haley, this is Josephine in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm sending much love to the tribe and thank you, Seven. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Destin. Thank you, all the pillars of the tribe. Love you and glad to be here. Wholeness tribe, this is Dee in sunny San Diego. Um, I just want to say infinite love and gratitude to everyone in the tribe. Wholeness, Dee. Uh, this is Trey, starting in from uh, Brentwood, Tennessee. Just so uh, thankful for tapping in and feeling you guys' energy. So I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for the, uh, the the beautiful message that Seven has prepared for us. And uh, boots are buckled and ready for takeoff. So on this family. Oh, the Go ahead, bro. My bad. I'm in the engine room <laughs> so, right now. What's up, bro? <laughs> That time change here, y'all. <laughs> Had me shifted. So giving thanks coming forward. Brother Curtis of Rule coming from South Carolina. Sending love to you. Much love. Definitely in the cockpit. Ready for the flow tonight. Oh, nice. Honest brother Curtis. Always great to hear your voice too. Honest tribe. This is Mano <laughs> chiming in from Kibis Kane here in Florida. Sending love to the drive. Ready to uh Start traveling at light speed tonight. I'm ready and buckle in. Let's go. Honest Manu, Honus Tribe. This is Kenji calling from Dallas. So Honus. Hi, Kenji from Dallas. This is Kwanda from Nashville, Honus Tribe. Love y'all. Holiness Kwanda, this is Renee from Sanford, Florida. I just love y'all's energy, man. Everybody's energy is on 10. I love it. Holiness. Holiness Renee, it's great to see you. This is Julianne, Holiness Tribe. I'm um, calling in from Bryan, Texas. <laughs> Holiness Julianne, this is Chrissy Bear from in Mexico. Holiness. All right, we're 500 deep in the building, so you know what it is. I am now ready for the takeoff. I'm officially in the cabin. I trust everybody has their tray table stowed and uh, that you're ready to go in this evening. I wanted to first start off by saying it is so pleasant to be here. 
to be at this stage of maturity and awareness and to have made it through. I give thanks every single day. All of what we want to achieve has already been achieved. Let me set this real quick here. This evening, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be celebrating a massive just graduation. There we go. Massive graduation. And this graduation is about this journey of lessons that we've been on at least for the last 20, 30 years. Let's just give that solid chunk of experience in the world. All of the master teachers who've come through in different ways, the good and bad. And then just to be in this moment and to be able to look back on thousands of years. And that's the interesting part about being present is that you have these thousands and thousands of years behind you. And if you choose to use your vision and see over those lands, you can now put together the big question that is even proposed as the title to this build, how we got on earth. Now that's something really basic in that way, I try to keep my titles these days, you know, remember it used to be <laughs> the quantum sphere of Mantar Neblium, you know what I mean? It kind of like one of Duke Osir's titles. It'd just be like, okay, that I, we loved it, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it didn't do anything for the YouTube views, I'll just tell you. But anyway, so this is, you know, when you can bring all of that legacy in and you can culminate that now, because I really think that, as our brother Curtis was saying, the, the last strong, it's like really good to be silent for certain periods and just kind of let everything else just talk and show and express. So that way, you know, when you come through, it's kind of easy to, to really see, you know, for people to see at least where you're at versus where everything else is at, right? And also... I like to, I'm in this competition with myself, I ain't gonna lie. And that's why I be telling people, hey, don't compete with me because I'm like in this thing with myself. And it's like one of those video games where you're racing and then when you race that first lap, the next thing that you're racing is your last time, your last race. And you know, and now you're, you're trying to beat your shadow and then you get ahead of your shadow. So I'm, I'm into something like that. I'm also in advanced intelligence. Like I can't say enough about how many times when somebody told me not to do something if I had not done it, I would have been in some type of limitation. <laughs> I've been able to not only utilize the blueprint to refine the greatest experiences on earth, I believe, but I've also found a special and unique way to come and bring that information to you. And that's through my heart. I'm actually in this space. I don't need anything. I'm good. My cup runneth over, but man, when you get into that position, it seems like everything just opens up for you. And it's like you have everything. It's that strange thing about life. I feel like it's the divine feminine part of life. It's like you chasing her, she's running. The moment you pull back, she's like, hey, maybe he's worth something. You know, it's just this thing about life, you know, being magnetic, you run after something and your, your force is pushing it away. If you just sit for a moment, you bring it in. And so that's how we're running with this. We have time-tested maxims. They say I'm getting a little long in the tooth right now, even though, man, it does feel like yesterday. Like, I don't know, it may be the, the hydrogen and the monotonics or something, but I'll just be like, all right, well, I guess I'm pretty sure when I leave this space, it's going to be the same thing going on. I'm going to be able to open up all these lights, like when I go to sleep, and I'm going to be able to project all of these worlds. And it's just like an ode to these spiritual spaces right now, including Earth and how they operate what I have to deliver today. Now, again, I'm not in any rush. Like, I, I think we'll actually be able to get out of here within a nice time span tonight. But, you know, as a thoroughbred, I can really go five hours on you. So I'm not going to do that tonight. I know some of y'all are like, oh, no, I just, I, I'm trying to get to the club. You know what I mean? <laughs> but let's see, you know, like some of y'all in the car right now. I know. I, there's 500 folks on the line over. So, I'm sorry, 600 folks over here. And it's 84 folks. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, the numbers ain't adding up. Where you at? But listen, you know, we give thanks also because it's one of those collective things. So even those that are going to be in the future, here in the future, watching this in the future, we feel you now. So 
With that also being said, we want to take a moment to touch and connect because that's the special thing. This is the moment that we celebrate. These are the two outraised hands. These light hammers right here, this is how it all gets done. Like ask somebody with no hands or even to move a couple fingers missing and how tough it is, it's tough. But because you have this and a local library, you really have everything. So it is just really about maximizing rather than normalizing. Like I can tell you personally, you can go and fly across with your astral body and everything and still come back and be sitting on the bus tomorrow. It's possible. <laughs> like they, they, they got it twisted. Heaven is within, you know, the reality still is, is that, you know, you can normalize to any experience. Like I was talking to a friend the other day, they've been in Ukraine and some of the developers that I work with and, and I said, say, so how is it on the ground over there? And he said, it's so it's, it is what it is. And I said, what do you mean? He said, that's shoot. If we get like a missile or two, I'm out in the West, missile or two every, every month. You know what I mean? So at this point, it's like a big firework. We got tired of running. And so technically here, it's all about being able to gauge your experience about how much energy you can bring into the space. So I'm bringing that. And I'm also bringing that awareness again, that because one of the beings here, <laughs> all the shapes, all the see it, so what that means is that we've been able to unlock something that's perpetual. And so we open up these spaces because they are latent spaces. They are portals where in the future, past or present, if you ever feel like you're getting lost or something that you prefer is needed, then it can come from this space because all the glory, all the honor, all the riches, seven to nine fold press down running over is happening. And that's just what it is. Now, this is the process, though, where we do condition the mind, body and soul to take on that awareness and we like to go deep like all the time you can see my numbers is low because i'm always hitting those those soft points you know what i mean i may go for just mm, you know here here's a chakra that we need to open back up let's get this moving and you know it could touch deep and so even you know this this film that i'm going to be playing this evening that i created is it's a rough draft i will say that right now but it's an essence of again we go deep so it's no use in in this time that we're in right now with the atrocities that are actually happening to be to be meek and to to not speak and and to to not really understand how we have the thing that changes everything which is just us saying something and meaning it and then doing it aligning our hearts with our mouths right and our minds so in that we give thanks for you and we let you know about these spaces. There's quite a few of these open already. Like we're about 600 bills in just on the try by side. So we give thanks. All right. So listen, because this video is about 20 minutes, that means that I was like, okay, but I want to go in. It's like double dutch for me. I'm like, but I, I want to go in. So I got a couple things that I want to start with. And again, I mentioned how this search that we've been on is like every single day for me for years especially in the past and to these recent grand revelations, there has been an aggression to, for me to understand why I'm here. And not only why I'm here, what is here? <laughs> Cause I start realizing you gotta even take a step back. He's like trying to figure out who you are and you don't even know what you're standing on is. This is like, it could get dizzy. It's kind of like one of those journeys where the floor disappears and you're like, huh? I, I guess I fall now and then you start falling. It's like a dream. You just start falling into the like, oh, Okay. I'm not falling. You know, so it's, you realize you're controlling it, but what is it? And so that journey is what I've been on now. Also like now you got to admit, because if you go back to the annuals and the records, like we've been going in like archive.org, I've, I've been feasting. Right. And then also just gnosis. Like once you start connecting it and breathing into it, it's just going to show up. But now, I have AI. <laughs> AI is like the power glove for information. And all these cats out here thinking that they can calculate faster than the calculator are just being fooled. When it comes to knowledge and information, we have reached the peak. I have local models running right now, just deployed, like real deal, crawling over everything. It's the only amount of time before we had a code to Zion type stuff. And it's just because we're here. And while that's happening, also the distractions at an all time high. You got, you can't lie. They like, shit, we fit the nuke at all. I'm like, shit, nuke it all then. <laughs> it's like, shit, it's been, okay, it's been a billion years of people saying Earth is going to be over. <laughs> it seems like it survived them. So what's the truth? It's never over. It's all about what you can do in this moment. 
So I have this um, huge chapter again that I'm closing for a certain segment of my life of trying to figure out who's who and what's what. And hopefully I can do that for you this evening. Then I'm opening up a brand new book that has nothing on the pages except for the imagination and what you can put on them. I'm also continuing what I began two strongs ago. By the way, I don't call them weeks. I call them strong. So two strongs ago, we began to discover what everything is inside of us and how that connects with things like the planetary system, specifically the organs and the planets. So I was going to come in here with a big data dump today, especially about Venus, and just really just take it all apart because I have about 80 characteristics, right? But then, as with everything, it was like, nope, that's not what's going to happen. We're going to go through a nonlinear approach. We're going to go through a total integration of going through the experience of understanding what is exactly inside of you when we're talking about the organs. Okay? So... Let's get the video started because, you know, I'm, I'm lit. I'm ready to drive, but I'm going to let this drive. So let me give you a little backstory on what you're about to watch. So I was actually just brainstorming on something, and I decided to pull out the recorder. And because I was in one of the most optimal places with water, water was just tuning me in right away to a message that it wanted to come through. So I recorded it. And then when it got done, I decided that I was going to run it through a system that we're about to deploy. And this system allows you to bring in text like this story, and then it'll start animating the story. It'll start bringing in illustrations for the story. We call it Storyteller by Sybil. And so in this case, you're looking at a rough draft but something that I was even like, even getting done with it today, I was like, man, I'm coming back. I, I got sound effects. I got a uh, continuity, you know, I got color LUTs. I got all types of stuff to put over this, but you'll see where it's going because truly it's the core message. I didn't want the message to just be on the, on the recorders and stuff and never get out to everyone because this one was special. And I also wanted to, like, again, challenge myself to see how fast I can get another way beside just the verbals and just me to express what I'm saying to everyone. And this is because I do hear <laughs> so often, or people are, they just don't get it. It's flying way above their head, and they even criticize. It's like, yo, only way you understand this dude is if you take some of the pills. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, they'll say weird stuff, right? But I, I get it. I, you know, sometimes if you don't start off at the beginning, and I don't know if I could ever make it appear person just gets it right away or coming out of the baby womb, like, mm, nah, okay, wholeness, what is this? But maybe, you know, maybe I can put it in the milk. I don't know. But at this stage, uh, sometimes it's like eating rocks for a babe. And so I feel like that what can assist that, though, because it's all about communication and you can communicate anything as a great communicator, then putting words to it, is one thing, then putting pictures to it is another, and then putting sound, you know, and keep layering it until you get a complete immersion. So let's go with it. Um, again, Des, you know, taking your time, I'm gonna ask for a thumbs up once audio starts playing, uh, if it's good enough, because this does start off a little rough um, just from the audio quality, but it runs like a train, as you'll see here in a moment. So I call it in the beginning, <laughs> part one. And uh, yeah, let's go with that. Let me first make sure the sound is on over here. Okay, yeah. All right, here we are, let's see. Okay, here we go with the second time of attempting to reiterate the creation story of the world. It is Friday, November 10th. We're speaking with them and Bomar. And all right, so let's let's start here on a top-down approach. But on the top, let's just imagine we have a segmentation line. And then that way we don't have to try to explain the unexplainable. <laughs> and 
below that egg segmentation line, we're going to just put the great mother. And I for sure know that we need to not confuse the great mother with earth females. And to make it very easy to understand, let's just imagine that there are female birds. So if you were to say that the great mother who also birthed whales, turtles, and everything else that you're seeing is a bird, you can see where your error would come in. So we have to then classify really the component of the female that she has, which is an external womb, as being why most connect even the earth human female to the great mother in that way, okay? Because there could be many deceptions that can occur if you assume that the great mother is in that default category of goddess. So from there, there then is the great mother's first generation. And in this case, this gen is Python. Also, uh, you can actually even take the acronyms. You could take the words and push them back a little bit and just say it's Pi. And Pi is a creating force in the... Okay, here we go with the second time of... Excuse me, everyone. I didn't even start that over again. Creation I story of the world. A little bit. Let's see if I can get that back it to where is... we were. Okay, here we go with the second time yeah, I of... I apologize. I guess we're going to watch it again. To reiterate the creation story of the world. It is... Friday, November 10th, you're speaking with Sam and Bomar. And all right, so let's let's start here on a top-down approach. But on the top, let's just imagine we have a segmentation line. And then that way, we don't have to try to explain the unexplainable. <laughs> and Below that egg segmentation line, we're going to just put the great mother. And I for sure know that we need to not confuse the great mother with earth females. And to make it very easy to understand, let's just imagine that there are female birds. So if you were to say that the great mother who also birthed whales, turtles, and everything else that you're seeing is a bird, you can see where your error will come in. So we have to then classify really the component of the female that she has, which is an external womb, as being why most connect even the earth human female to the great mother in that way, okay? Because there could be many deceptions that can occur if you assume that the great mother is in that default category of goddess. So from there, there then is the great mother's first generation. And in this case, this gen is Python. Also, uh, you can actually even take the acronyms. You could take the words and push them back a little bit and just say it's Pi. And Pi is a creating force in the external. So where the confusion could come in is when you're thinking of the offspring of the great mother, if you assume that these offspring are like men, singular gendered in that way, then you're already in error. Because all the offspring are in every way parthenogenic and can actually, or what would be called aphroditic and can produce and generate from themselves. And it's not like, oh, let's generate this castle. <laughs> let's generate this pyramid. It's generation. It's like pure life force, orgasmic energy. Okay, and then everything comes forth from that. And so we then have this moving from this original form that begins to birth more offspring. So when you start thinking of even the ancient beings, you only think of them as really fundation components, genitalia in that way, because they are productive. They are life givers. 
that's what the word creator is. Not procreator, but creator. And so when you move from the many generations that came after that, you then are attempting to connect in with Earth module. <laughs> you see what I mean? Which through a series of events that have been taking place over all these times, you've even lived here long enough. But through a series of events, now the reality is so literal, it is actually has physical components playing out what the original blueprint or the original order or in original stamp, the original imprint did a long time ago. But in such a micro way, like even down to every single element, every single essence being named and numbered. Okay, so these are the creative realities. So because all the created realities actually bear witness or are replicas, especially on the high levels of the original acts, we continue in the story that over time in bringing this into physicality, there arose the situations that you would see occur in any family structure, the jealous uncle, all of these different things. And this creates what I call the chessboard or the game or I Ching, you can say, the 64 hexagons, the movements, if you may, and everything that happens in an action and reaction paradox. Okay. Now, also just a word to beyond the beyond, you know, when, when people are trying to comprehend you know what is beyond all this actually you hit densities that are in their cells trying to be motionless <laughs> so even from the way that we take in stimulus it wouldn't be the way or direction to actually reach the beyond because the beyond is is actually not taking breaths it's not doing any action reaction it's not doing any yin yang it's not doing any of that uh, and the, the path to that is that is slows down. So there are techniques and ways to slow down yourself, slow down reality. So that way you can actually perceive more of what's happening rather than allowing it to just fly by and you don't even comprehend what's going on. And so, you know, I just wanted to make sure that there's an anchor point here, because if we're sailing into waters, deep waters, you don't know what's down it. And, you know, every time we go out to the ocean, we see something different. It's that vast. So the subconscious mind is for sure that same way. And so on the subconscious journey, you're going to see so many reflections, and of course, all being reflections of things that are so large. But when they even move just a little bit, they make a huge wave and they make things shake. And this brings forth more life. <laughs> shake, shake. <laughs> and so now that, that you're looking into the creative world, you would then see it span out very similar to a pyramid because you would have progeny or procreations from the seeds or the nut. And what this is simply about is, is the same process of why we're here now is that there is now external copulation because long after the descendants of python but basically still from the offshoot some of the grafted which means those who grafted themselves onto the bloodline decided to split the androgynous being into two surgically as the word sir means serpent sir sar sor sorcerer all of that means those who practice the or the source, the source in this case, symbolically is the sun in the sky. It is not a male. It is a androgynin. And, you know, as the story plays out, you just got to go step by step with this. There's a murdering that takes place. And this is what the surgery is. It's like a it's a surgical process that not only then causes one the menstru menstruation cycle for a woman where instead of her seed going through 
herself into or set of the male reproductive organ, then giving the seed internally and then the seed coming to nature and then the being being nurtured from inside and birthed and grown and the consciousness increases because the being is still inside. One then brings the force and the life outside of itself. And that can only happen when you split the two worlds, if you may, or the two organisms. And in this case, the sun has the moon as its offspring, but its offspring was cut off. This was because there was literally a cable or a tree that connected the offspring to its mother. And this tree was cut and that that produced the murder, murder of a, what would be a, the high ram or the murder of the moon. It cut off. The moon became cut off and the moon died. And since there's no such thing as death, the moon becomes a denizen of the underworld. OK, and this is where all of the sacred mysteries begin, because now in this process, the son who was connected to the mother becomes a inhabitant of a subconscious realm that it did not know completely at all what was in that realm because it would be like dropping the sun into the deep and you know again super new to the whole thing neophyte you know all of that okay and in this maddening process of course this is how this sun uh is brought up but the sun also has abilities and powers don't get it twisted because it is still the offspring of its quote unquote mother. Uh, however, it is young and it's about to realize like the legacy, if you may, of all of the massive forces that are out there. Like when you think of like the whole Orion complex itself is a hyper advanced reptilian empire if you may the order um you can think about different animals or insects that you see and how different they are from everything else and then start to comprehend the side reel so in every tense this powerful offspring who is now cut off now this is symbolic to the first degree in freemasonry also where the entered apprentice is taken through a mock, mock ritual sacrifice to cut him off and, and it's because so as things began to unfold, let's go back a little bit. So the sun now in the underworld, in the subconscious, is being influenced by all of the forces around him. And this is and, and this process continues to take place. It's like a never ending process of dying and becoming baptized into the world, if you may. Uh, and. The process of trying to raise yourself out of the underworld, <laughs> which the Egyptians obviously documented and participated in uh, from various levels. It's better to read the Hindu text because many of the denizens of the subconscious netherworld were actually fixed, meaning that they could not change. There was no getting to another level for them. They didn't desire that. They reigned completely, if you may, where they were. And, you know, some refer to them as the archons who are the organs and that their passions and their desires. That's why it's like seven chakras, seven deadly sins and seven planets, seven days or seven daemons and all of that, you know, would basically keep the sun binded. Now, we're saying sun in this tense to the offspring of the moon or excuse me, the offspring of the sun, which is the moon. And this is also a part of the confusion because the language that has been created, the spells support a hack in the story where that cutting off um, the cutting off itself. And then what happens after the cutting off is is hidden like cloaked. And so we'll go to that a little bit. So and imagine all this is kind of happening simultaneously. So you can see the lessons here. But in the cutting off, the sun becomes more like what you would perceive is like a werewolf. Um, Lesser things like jackals and dogs, werewolves and jackals are actually very similar. Jackal may be a little bit more on a higher level as far as aggression. So when we think about just again all the dog motif and God motif and dogma motif and all of that, this is where that all comes from that house, if you may, where the dogmen 
in this case, uh, like hidden in the story of Romulus and Remus, become rulers of the Matrix in a certain way and actually overthrow all of the matriarchal hive mind knowledge and information that is inside of the mainframe. So like when I'm saying hive mind, what I'm saying is everything that came through Earth knew the story of everything that happened here because it is written inside of the what you would call uh, the astral records or whatever. Right. It's really dictated, of course, by the Karim, as I brought up before. And and they faithfully record. And so in that way, they are like it's hard to use the word artificial because that's a very crude word, but like an artificial intelligence that is literally logging everything. But in a way where the neural network is so strong that it is able to comprehend how to make synchronicities happen, uh, who is going to link up with who, all of these probabilities basically that, you know, dictate what's going to happen in the whole matrix. You see what I mean? And then, so what happens is, of course, there is also this riddle about the word or like that this thing can be controlled, this physicality that we're in, pi, if you may, through one word. And one word casts a field around external objects, which you would think is an external object, because every external object is living because it's pulled from the primal material. It's pulled from like if you even plastic was pulled from the earth. OK, so everything is made out of something. And at its basic level, there is a geometry that all of the everything is created from. And you can cast that web or net around that object and manipulate that object. You could change its molecular structure. You could make it larger, smaller. You can make it increase. This is the philosopher's stone in every way and the panacea in every way. So. As the knowledge was going forth, there was a desire as, you know, the werewolf <laughs> and the troglodytes and, you know, everything from the subconscious is now getting together, what you would call the forces of evil, whatever. There is a there is a constant progress of them also becoming educated, which is also part of their evolution <laughs> about like these mysteries and mainly the word. And this word then becomes sought after. It's like the biggest thing in the land. And this has always happened through successions of time, except for right now. Um, and this is because the world word has been discovered. And now, you know, we're on to the next thing. But back in the past, there was a quest to find this word. And so obviously you have all these micro micro um, lives happening amongst all the principalities, too. And they're kind of going through their own version of this initiation, if you may. <laughs> And so just remember, this is a hyper dynamic system. And so what ultimately ends up occurring is, is that the word is moving through the land, but within certain beings, certain we won't even call them people, because what happens is, is when the word fills someone, it then um, once it fills someone, it then taps them into the mainframe, if you may. <laughs> Uh, and then when that happens, it's like they become the conduit, but they have to now it's Kundalini, obviously, is what I'm talking about. The word actually unlocks Kundalini. It's open sets me. Right. Like in the times of them playing the the flute and then the serpent starts coming out from its from the bottom of the dead, uh, which is the root chakra in the Cossacks. OK, that's Python. <laughs> so this act of trying to rise Christ from the dead is the act of trying to basically bring the sons or the physical son you see in this guy, the actual, you know, that that child back to life inside of a human being. So then the werewolf jackal, which is the pentagram, Mendes, becomes upright and then ascends back to its source. OK, <laughs> and in between all of that are all of these blind beings, beings that they have. They cannot ascend because through different infractions and different things, it's like every time life plays out for them, instead of choosing life, which is the great mother, they choose the distortions or what's called daemon. Right. In this case, the diamond, like it, the carbon, the six hundred and sixty six. Right. Which is all sex. It's like 
external it's xxxx is death so it's like external creation but there's no reciprocation so seldom does the child born physically actually restore its parents versus internally that's not like in the system that's not like a, a choice if you may that's how the system is designed that the system continues to contribute to itself and so anyone that was tapped into the truth knew hey you know we are stewards stewards of earth let's keep you know feeding it and nourishing it right and of course that got into also some huge dementia with the subconscious of course still being exposed to all of this and being very noob so meaning that people started thinking that the earth wanted its babies and wanted this and wanted that and that they would give it to the earth and then they would be pleased by it. and that was the moon <laughs> because the moon was in this stage where it was yearning and this is where what it does in its waxing and waning cycles and it yearns to be back with its mother but it has become so demented in this whole process of being swung from different parts of the degrees of the netherworld also called the 33 and the third like it's like the 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 way that the sky is positioned either 33 and the third or 66.6 .6 of it is always in darkness depending on what you call darkness <laughs> and so that's that's a primer for what i'm saying is how we would look at what we're actually in and what we should be doing here in the space and how can we prepare ourselves for what comes next also being aware that this is now like it's in a timeless spectrum so really what you have is technically jinn <laughs> you know which had taken control over the physical human creation process you know i call it operation smurfette <laughs> this is when they split again and first in the priestcraft of our moon originally they split the male from the female they split the androgen and created the female this is gargamel right the gargar gargon you know, this is like all of these words, Google, all these words, they mean something, especially in Sumerian. And they refer just directly to this process that's so gory <laughs> and of literally like a Frankenstein type process of trying to create an external womb by, you know, uh, um, incepting beings that were hermaphroditic and many of them oceanic, because most of what I'm explaining to you took place in the deep it took place in what we're calling physically the ocean and when it finally makes it on land it's already so what you would call technologically advanced human bodies being built from radiolaria parts meaning like if you go and look at george haeckel's radiolaria and you look at those parts what you'll see is the exact shells that hold the organs of the human body and if you go into the Kabbalistic, they explain to you that the shells or Shigadil became the formations of the seven deadlies, meaning like when you don't figure out how to rise above your prison or prism of light, then you become like congealed into a form like wax, like records. And then you just keep playing out like a DVD, selling out all the time. And this be based on affiliations. <laughs> and that's why it's important to stop life at a certain point for yourself. Slow it down, at least, because you can't stop the wheel. Slow it down and then perceive what is going on around you. What affiliations are you making? And have you checked completely what is behind those affiliations it's easy to just be non-affiliated externally and just go within and live the real quest <laughs> that's what i did 12 years ago so i've been reporting to you all this time the same thing pretty much in different levels of intricacy about hey choose yourself choose and then you choose life 
And everything, if you still have any of it left in you from what you thought of as a child, that the world would eventually be and that existence would eventually be the happiness that that's what will be restored. Because if you go to all meaning that you will start living that life because every single thing that they are teaching was that Earl Nightingale. So many of these old time, you know, teachers that rose up a whole race of men and women to become the rulers of the world. They were primary Napoleon Hill, you know, they were primarily Hilton Hotima. They were primarily hammering in the minds of their own. Whatever it is that you believe is going to happen. <laughs> this is what we've discovered in all these ancient secret temples and all this, whatever you believe is going to happen. And then some took that knowledge and said, well, shoot, that means if we make them believe because this is an old game. That's why the Bible exists. Make them believe they have an expiration date. There's going to be a time where they all get into it and it's going to create the end of their world. <laughs> because right around that time, we're going to already, you know, because it's like it's perfect timing looking at the stars. And it's like we're going to already have made it to a level where we don't need all those external jacks like you see on your wall. You see these jacks. They call it that plug outlet. You see in a car, you see that jack and you know its use. You see that cane and that's another jack and you know its use is to prop up something until it can stand on its own. So for me and mine, we're going to keep flourishing. We're going to realize that it is, it's perfectly fine to go beyond all of this. <laughs> that you know this is a lesson from mother this is a lesson from father this is a lesson from demented uncle this is a lesson from and then be able to go beyond that not just get caught all up in it <laughs> like these spiders they weave their webs they're like zombies they have always been following the pattern leading themselves back into the same course or the same curse so you could try to follow them and suffer their fate as so many have there's so many examples you can learn a lot from a dummy buckle up see if there's a feedback loop out there. Am I still on earth? All right, we're going to remove the spotlight. So I will, I will remaster that and um, <laughs> do a little color correction. But technically what I'm saying here is, is that it, it is always great to have a moment to just summarize. And I have more. <laughs> that's why I said buckle up <laughs> like oh at that commercial you can learn a lot from a dummy that's only a certain generation right and I'm talking to that generation because we got to call in reserves now like you see how in Israel they call in they reserve everybody was trained there everybody goes to the military it's not an option and so secret energy is 46,000 deep and I'm calling in the reserves. We're going to deploy another level. I'm already working with it. Like we're on PHP nine. Now we're going to reboot secret energy, but in this way, we're going to use everything that we learned about what we get an opportunity to do with each other. And, uh, so 2024, that's what it is. It's all lining up. And but going further with this, because obviously I just I'm trying to just, you know, I'm trying to let everybody, you know, yeah, we need to land for a moment here. And then we're going to take off again. But I think that, you know, actually, let, let's keep making hyperdimensional space. So now let's just get this very clear, because I'm not trying to beat around the bush. So as you understand it now, the androgynous body. Self-generates 
because it's reabsorbing its own essence, which is everything that we've already learned about Kundalini and cycling, energy, fluid, semental retention, all this stuff that we've learned, menstruation and all these kind of things all lead to being able to cultivate. But because there's an exit, that means that it's going to come into the physical reality. And the androgynous being did not have exits in that way, meaning that it could take its progeny and bring it completely through itself and raise it. And that's what we called ruling from the egg. Because as this thing is getting more powerful, it's kind of like ginseng, right? You'll notice all the gins, ginseng, ginger, they hold a lot of power. Like even a person that's halfway dialed in, you cut open a ginger and you put your thumb on the ginger and you can feel the power of this this plant you see what i mean because many of these plants like the world is just full of energy that's that's the whole thing here it's full of of chi and full of this power but of course you would ask well shoot if it was just everywhere all these benefits why don't i have it exactly why <laughs> that's the big why in our lives right and what i do is i traffic the why <laughs> like i really really be going through these all right so what direction do we need to go I'll be like, okay, you go over there and I'll go over here and we'll report when we get halfway through. Using a whole different advanced level of awareness. It's like the only big thing that I'm trying to express here, though, is what was just preventing all of that is because I was looking at and listening to everybody else because all this knowledge and wisdom is very clear. So let's just get into the Nagas. So as I said, when you're configured where you're self-generating, then your whole priority system is different because you're not in that, that wane, <laughs> in that where. That's why the words were wild on that video. It's like that werewolf, it's like that, that where and what that means, where and war, like just being in that stage all the time, like battle ready, you know, just like, like a mech. You know, you're just ready for it to go down. And, you know, th that's why many of us have taken shelter in the exact opposite, which is like, I'm just like going to take a moment and take a break from all this high level, whatever, and experience and existence because it's all around you. And I'm just going to go to the club. I'm just going to go party. I'm just going to think, you know, I'm going to follow. I'm going to go to sleep. And that happens to avatars, meaning that it could become so much what we're talking about if you don't if you haven't reached a level of mastery this is what i got to get to here it feels like a lot to somebody who can't lift anything and all of that is just a thought and many of us who have been through a lot we understand how to think our way out of things how to like not take it like even in a dangerous situation the clearest thinker is the one that survives and they're generally the most calm so through all of this chaos I've also been very precise and still saying, hey, they opening up everything. Like I'm sure some know they even fired uh, Samuel Altering Man over there at OpenAI today. Damn, <laughs> they just got, they firing each other. And I'm like, okay, shit, I guess Microsoft about to move in then with the Azure. But serious, the, the external realities are continuing to, to go on and, and keep their thing happening. And, as long as we're connected to it, like in the financial ways and those kind of things, then they're still fun to do, I call it. Like if our family is still in it, then we still, you know, we, we got to suit up again. But I need to make sure that you understand what exactly you're dealing with, because you can deal with all this from your being, your consciousness. Because when you know everything that's happening, you'll start seeing how the reality even starts warping because you're at a certain level of awareness. It's like that. I mean, I can't come in here and explain to you that it takes so much to achieve this and it's so hard. That's not my message. It's just, they've been scrambling all the data <laughs> and you cannot count on anyone giving you master level knowledge. Like where would you even see them? They're not at the mall. Like if you think about how many people have actually come in to actually take humanity to another stage that has billions of dollars, where are they at? What does money really do? <laughs> you see what I mean? Something's going on out there. Ask Buffy. <laughs> but I'm saying like, this is about getting beyond all of that, but you, we got to use a whole different level of, of, of <laughs> we got to use a whole different playbook here. 
And that's because there are also principalities involved. There are beings that they're bent on the intention to actually control us and harness our power, our energy. But you need to understand the legacy that you come from, though, because word to the wise, many of the great ancestors, they just went back to where they came from or forward, as we always say. What popped off here was, first of all, we need to get into the ancient ones. And by the way, there may be a brief interruption and then I'm going to come back online, but I'm letting everybody know now that, um, yeah, it could happen with the Internet. So let's just let's just gather all of the knowledge that we know really briefly. And let me just take you on a journey. So this kind of begins with Paschal Bishop Randolph. I believe the name is Randolph or Randolph Bishop, Paschal Bishop you know, or variant of that name. And this gentleman who was African-American introduced what was then Ordus Templi or the Theosophical Society to the works, the actual works of the Kathan, which is basically uh, ancient art carried by the Igbo of communicating with the ancient ones, okay? The ones in the deep. And when you think of the deep, you're more thinking like if you if you understand how much space and how much pressure is going on in the deep, the life forms are so massive that their minds alone project worlds that other beings can live in. And so this mythos, which was crunched into another book uh, that was never published, but there was a fake one came out called the Necromicon, the book of Al Hazred or the Mad Arab where the compositions of any written particles from how to call upon the ancient beings of the deep, okay? Which from Al Hazred, some words drove him mad that their intellect was so vast, interfacing with them just wrecked your mind completely. And so this is what they sought after. It's kind of like the new Mission Impossible where right off, I haven't even finished seeing the movie, but right off, they see a, a horrible, terrible power and they just get immediately fascinated with trying to control it. <laughs> you know, that's, that's another part of how our consciousness works. We got beings that when we run into something terrible, they're trying to control it right away. You know, there's pros and cons to that, right? But in this way, they wanted to contact these beings, the ancient ones. Now, the backlog on this is technically buried in what you would call South India right now. The language before Sanskrit is Tamil. This language is hyperdimensional. Like we were working with this language like 18 years ago and it was like you could travel through this language without even knowing this language. It was, it was a journey within itself, you know, definitely a uh, wholeness to our brother Jean Pablo who put all that in After Effects and 3D'd it. And the interface was vast. Like when we were on journeys with Diamond Tree, we were looking into anything that could have power just based on everything that we had learned and studied. And we found power there. But again, if your consciousness can't comprehend and is not mature enough to understand what's happening and what you're seeing, you know, it gets stored, it gets logged. And that's why um, I like this uh, 45 that I'm in right now, 45 years old, we call it fortified right <laughs> and so in this it's like a different approach at actually looking at the wisdom you you're able to go a bit deeper give me a quick second here i need to take care of the line so i don't it's a rash interruption here okay and so underneath the temples inside us in anchor wat or actually all the throughout south india which you can check out praveen mohan on YouTube for a long journey, go back to the old stuff. Like he's just all in the temples because they did a very messy cleanup job over there. They just figured nobody would be looking after they left the country so desolate. But there are the shot, the Vimanas, the vehicles of the Nagas, which are now they seem like they're stone. Most of them very heavy iron ore, meteor material, and they're now deactivated if you may. And you could see the seat inside of many of the temples where the Naga rests in the seat and then opens up its lotus and then interfaces with all of the cymatics that are on the roof 
and then begins to activate the vehicle, which then turns into turns on the dimensions, if you may, okay? And so, mind you, this record of these specific beings is all around the world, not only as the Dogen Nomo, uh, the Naga and the Nagus in the connection with the Rastafarians, uh, all the way into Angkor Wat, as I mentioned earlier, all the way into Persia, you know, if you look at the Eddie Murphy, the golden child, you know, the, the being that's behind the curtain. In the ancient times, the Chinese wrote about that these beings were masterful in the things that they created. And they were like the original originators of the, the first, which you would say is a Silk Road. Because everyone came to them in Persia to buy these fantastic things, but they never saw them. They had some humanoid courtesans, but no, they never saw like who's making all of this and they got all this money and like, who is this? And see, and that that's symbolic to understand that the beings that were aquatic, first of all, they don't live on the surface. They need to be in like what their favorite places are underwater, under temples in the water, sacred waters right, where nobody has touched the waters and there's no backflow from other things because the clear and clean water is like necessary to these beings, okay? And so also because they were in every way more aquatic, they got terms like the goddess with the fishy smell, right? This is the main goddess because they were a matriarch. And so it was known that they they actually had an odor to them. And then the, kind of the Necromicon and other books kind of pick up from there about these aquatic beings and just their composition. Now for us, where we need everything perfect fi, we need Fox, as it's called. You know, it's all on Instagram. I can tell you right now that these ancestors are nowhere near as attractive. <laughs> Meaning that their appearance to us is hideous because this is also recorded that as things go on there's almost like a disdain for the ancient ones for a variety of reasons one becomes their 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 appearance overall and their smell and in some in many ways their ways because as a different, totally different kind of being that is in a process or in a plan to hybridize and create forms that can hold their seeds, they may not be the greatest to have a conversation with is what I'm saying, okay? I just have to take you to a jump to understand that even a lot of the descriptions that are coming, like a lot of times people be thinking, ah, oh, you know, yeah, I want to be with it and all that. And that's not necessarily the makeup of these beings and their agenda and what they have done. Because in every way they are geneticists. Because it's specifically, and I'm talking about specifically in Lemuria, what took place is, as you'll see in many of these temples and in, in what's on the wall, is the crossbreeding between what would be the, the original serpentine gene, the one strand DNA, if you may, crossbred with the mammalian animals. And I have heavy documentation of this. And what this produced is the monsters, as it's called, because in this process of the genetics or the genesis, if you may, this is also where the ancient ones or the ancestors get a very bad rap, which is through their mistakes, because they end up creating certain life forms that in themselves are so vile. It's just been literally hell dealing with some of these life forms. So this creates what you can say is like, if there could ever be like a courtroom, like a case where something pleads to whatever there is, 
like as I said before, if you believe something's gonna happen, you can send energy out. So there's like a plea that's coming from Earth, like stop this madness, okay? And this is also encoded within the Tower of Babel, that the Tower of Babel is also about this regener regeneration process where they're taking different animals and they're mixing them and making chimeras. There's a lot of books about this. They're doing it spiritually. They're doing it with the words. They're just in this like Mordor style. That's why I said in the video, like a Frankenstein kind of process of trying to create a super being. And this is because they are also descendants of the Naga. And so it's always been like um, a race of refinement to try to actually create a being. So while you over here, like trying to get a job and, you know, trying to get like a uh, sovereign or, you know, doing whatever, that's what they do. They are trying to design more and more vast refined beings that can hold their seeds and then like get something unique happening with that power. You see what I mean? So this is their interest. And they started from the mud. Like they started from the dirt with this process and kept breeding up. And despite the horrors that were bred from the process, which there is no such thing as death, this became known as the lesser keys, these beings. They kept still breeding up. And even the human being is a part of that breed. So the Nagas, again, in this way, also created things that when we say monsters, monsters are diseases, okay? On the micro level, and this is just an ode to like, there's stuff all around right now. If I had a microscope, I would be able to see it. I can't see it because I don't have a microscope, but it's there. So you're running around here thinking that everything that you can see is what really exists. And you're getting that confirmation by your two eyes, which are lying to you every day because there's a bunch of stuff that you cannot see. There are particles and all the stuff moving through the air. We can capture them, get a microscope and see them. So all I'm saying is, is that these monsters actually were diseases. And this is where Venus or Shukra becomes also related to venereal problems because in this cultivation, there is no astral hygiene at times being practiced. So monster is disease. And from all of the annuals from the Hindu text, this causes the sinking of the Lemuria, which is a process also of when this degradation and things begins to happen through basically contaminated Tantra. It's also affecting the plants, the animals, the, the seismic activity on Earth, all this stuff. This is what the meltdown of Atlantis was consisting of. There is also so many skirmishes happening in this time, this time between those of the, they call them the black face lords and the dazzling face lords. <laughs> okay, that is their official titles. Uh, and the recording is from Dizan or the book of Dizan, but before the book of Dizan, because that's got a huge hijack with Madame Blavatsky and her two magicians, McGregor Mathers and Eliester Crowley, who then bring forth what we know as Ordos Templi Orientis, we have before that these original Tibetan green gloves, dark Tantra books, okay? And these books detail summon, summoning these monsters, right, for a variety of reasons. So as you can see, this is an entirely different dynamic than what we've been exposed to at this point here on Earth. So people need to consider strongly if that's something that they want to really return to. A word to the wise, like I've been seeing a lot going on in the community where it's that same hijack again taking place where a lot of these cats who are bringing out these symbols, bringing out this darkness. It's funny because when somebody, somebody does it of lighter skin, then it's satanic. Somebody of blacker skin, now it's, I love you, and it's great. Like, there's a lot of hijacks happening right now. So just remember, like, we're always watching, too. Like, I'm participating in Earth. I've agreed to be here. So that means I'm going to bring my full capacity into the space. And so there's nothing that we really don't see. But the solutions, as I said, like, that's what takes the advance being, because this has gotten very complex. Because what it is that we're actually going after it's not something that we can, like, I can't get this thing off of you. <laughs> like, it's something that you have to do inside of yourself. 
right? So that's what's interesting about this is like, it's not like this huge demon to go and fight for everybody. That's what's different about this. It's something that is within, and that is something that a person personally begins to remove, but then enlightens themselves to the original state. Because remember, in, in the perfection, and this is even symbolic within the circumcision, when you're editing the original creation, this, is, this, this editing process has been going on for quite a bit and has not been sanctioned. It's like, why change and redevelop? And then so now you end up reaping what you sow. So the teachings and the mysteries that came to us were simply to allow us to re restore ourselves to the original state. That's why I always be sidetracking stuff that's like, if you cannot feel the original state coming from what that knowledge and what that wisdom is, like it's, it's like that, that's your path here. You're just, like I said in, in the presentation. However, remember though, that there are these life forms that are also here and they will always be here. And they are now within the very fabric and we're always within the very fabric of what we're made out of when we're made out of flesh and when we're infused with spirit. And then the same test that came to them ultimately comes to us. And remember, this is not a battle of who's gonna do good and who's gonna do bad. This is actually about who's gonna get balanced. And you can see that in your everyday life. I wanna also mention that if you think that this is not going on, meaning that they're, in, they're initiating the whole world into these mysteries, but into oblivion all the time. I'll give you an example. Now, for those that have seen what uh, I've already put forth about the jackal or the dog being a key component to its soul, its spirit, being a transmigratory, uh, uh, basically something that is used to bring certain humans back into this plane. I'll take you to the acronyms of the experiment itself, and it's called MJ. Okay? And MJ first starts off with Michael Jackson. Well, actually, MJ goes back a long way, but you know Mike. So Michael Jackson... Plays in Thriller, what? A werewolf, right? Now, let me take you to another MJ. His name is Michael J. Fox. Go tell that Fox. And what does he play? Teen Wolf. Okay? And you can keep going down the list, meaning that these initiations that are going on, like you've seen, your, your, your new guy is obviously Drake. Like, I literally dropped the whole divine revelation about all of the dog guys, the Cena Fally, and all of that. And then a week later, he dropped the album for my dogs, right? But it doesn't mean anything unless you, you know, I think he got that video with J. Cole, and it's kind of really telling in there. It's like, if you wanted to just say, okay, maybe is he right about this? Go listen to that and then go look at that video if you may. And then you'll see it all there. Like, wow, okay, this is, so many of these are connected. <laughs> Somehow this is all connected. I may not know how, but I'm explaining to you how, but beyond just getting caught up in the details, because that's just our pleasure. <laughs> it's just our pleasure to know the annuals and the sagas and the legacy of what we've been in. Like, I'm not faulting Naga, nobody. <laughs> you see what I mean? I'm here now. We here now. You know what I mean? If I move one of those pillars out of the way from the past, I disappear. So it's only contingent upon me being comfortable with the being that I am right now. Because if I'm not comfortable, comfortable with the being that I am right now, now I'm sliding through all these times and I'm sliding through all these different perspectives because I'm trying to change and this perspective, though, is a perspective taken from a snapshot of the sky, which in every star connects to every single tree here. And many of our large trees have fallen. I can't tell you enough about how many pictures there are of times when the whole log guy, log jammer, whatever they call him, right? He got the big, big ass saw. Because, see, this 
whole thing externally has been about getting large amounts of energy. But if you're not advanced, trees become a large amount of energy, right? So like take, take for instance, that they got all those trees to build all those buildings and to build all those structures that built the old matrix. All that stuff is gone now, but those trees, what did you cut? Umbilical cords. That's the surgeon's work. It's like to get cut off is symbolic. When the baby come in the world, they cut off the umbilical cord because that baby is the moon child technically at that stage. It's cut off from its mother. And apply these deep mysteries, it's like it answers so much and it gives you that confidence to know, oh, wow, all I have to do is then rise above that, put that back together in my consciousness and then go through it. That's what we're doing now. When there's lamb on the path or meaning there's distractions on the path and you all out in the forest and the wolves and all that stuff is out there, wood woos and all the rest of them. And then, you know, there, there's different sides to this. You can get caught up in Vasuki's realm, the gold gods, right? Like look at the Indians now, you know, they'd be over there like the rich Indians, the billionaires who don't give to their own people. They'd be like, oh, if you ever know the Indian, he loves to wear gold. Yeah, we know Naga. <laughs> Y'all hogging up the gold, like shiny things, flashy things. And then see what I mean? Like when you get it being that he thinks he's advanced, right? Because they be having like they cars and they be having all this stuff. And so they think they advance and smart, real, re, re, never realizing that they have been charmed by their own devices now <laughs> and been dismantled and dismembered. And then meanwhile, like the motherlands are crying. Like I heard a sister crying from, from Ethiopia or, or Eritrea. It's just like a blackout, Sudan, like nobody knows what's going on. Like remember in the United, the reason why we're not experiencing that is because there is such a heavy level of mind control from the obsidian mirror, which is the, the TV and then everything is, is, you know, the frequencies and all that. They figure in they got that covered. They don't need to kill these beings. But meanwhile, in the motherlands and all these countries right now, they're all like in turmoil. The snakes and the serpents of energy are running all over the place and they're getting lodged at borders. This is Earth's Kundalini. So that's why, again, I'm calling in the reserves. You know, it's like that's not something that you do. Like I said, there is names. There's words that you don't pronounce unless you see the sky crack, because that's the only time you would say the, these words with these kind of powers. And as I said before, like this whole thing with names and words, it's a real thing. I went through the experience personally of unlocking a Taurus inside of myself. Like an old man came and told me, he said, son, you've done the equivalent of igniting a nuclear bomb, but inside yourself like an implosion. <laughs> so I want to say this. We know now that we have all of our ancestors with us in our DNA. Within the very fabric of the animation of what we are, is untold potential, yet we feel that we can't unlock it sometimes or that we've reached the ceiling. Now the sky is the basement. If you go through what I had delivered here even this evening, if you didn't comprehend it, it's already working because the subconscious mind is just that. It's ready to wake up and it's ready to stand in to what now needs to happen with Earth because it always gets to this. I can tell you, man, like <laughs> I like what somebody said is a masterpiece, <laughs> you know, just being able to really be humble. Until it's time to do what's necessary to be done. I can remember times we will play games. And we will let the opponent think that they was gonna win. <laughs> it made the victory sweeter. See, I challenge myself all the time. You know, I find the youngsters though, they, they got sharp minds. So sometimes I'm in a, 
multi MMR PG or whatever, you know, they got the youngsters in there. You see how fast they think. And it's like, when you see what we're capable of doing and when we start showing them also what we have unlocked, what will come forth is not just the equivalent or the counterbalance, if you may, to all of this, what you're saying is quote unquote negativity in the world. It's actually what takes it to an entirely new level because we become the generation that actually utilizes the wisdom, the knowledge, and the power that, that we've received. Because now we're at the peak. That's why everything is flattened right now. Everything is quiet because it's like the next three years, <laughs> you can't sleep at all on the next three years being the most impacting in the last thousand years. Watch what I say. And how you play in this, because, see, that's what this is all about. It's like, this is what's resting on your memory banks. How you play it in all of this is whether you be able to completely cash in, if you may, on your talents. I mean that everyone was given a talent, an allotment, the uniqueness. We talk about this because it's invested in you. That's what the great mother gave you. And then now it's about... What can you really create with value to restore this whole thing? And remember, you're not doing it alone. So our next journey is coming together, going into those actionables that not only get us awake and alive again together, but also restoring all the other components of what is missing in what we would call the family structure. So I'm going to open this up because I've definitely gone in as an hour and a half, which is good. And we're gonna open this up to a few questions. I'm gonna have Sean take any questions from the chat. If you have a question, you can just type question. And then we're gonna hear from the tribe. I'm gonna take a couple, we'll get a couple glasses of water here. You know, I, I, it was a lot I could say maybe because we had the video too, but I'm sure you get where I'm coming from that this is one of those that you wanna be present for. This is one of those lives. That's all I'm telling you right now. Let's just kind of simplify all this. Let's take a moment. It's not about knowing everything that I just talked about and everything that I just had in the video. It's just about that moment where you make the decision, are you in? We, everybody's already out. <laughs> so there's no, are you in or are you out? No, that's not it. That's not this is understand land now. Are you in? And when we say that, then we understand like, okay, this is the power now. Because remember, you got baby Kundalini. Some have very developed Kundalini. <laughs> but some have ba baby Kundalini tucked into the cossacks of their spine. So when you know these mysteries, you know that the first humanoids, the first mammalian uh, uh, reptilian mix had a tail. <laughs> Some humans still have a dent there. <laughs> and in this tale is also their story, right? We've talked about that before. So some are missing their story. So they'd be like, hey, where's the rest of my tail? Because it's like, well, your other vertebrae are missing that are like the other ladders to how you climbed here. <laughs> so understand when I'm talking about the Naga, like I said, I got to represent it like it really is. Like, look, these beings they're venomous like they can actually coat the entire reality with a thing that just makes you just do whatever they tell you to do this is the kind of power they have and their offspring you see what i mean so it's like we were equipped and we were aware because we knew that we were basically created in a way that we were so resilient and so durable that we can live in environments that they couldn't live in <laughs> And that was the whole thing is like they wanted to further, I call it Naga synthesis. They wanted to further their goals of creating beings that can survive in any environment. Because even the normal said, 
even though they were some of the first to arrive here on earth, they knew they were not the first beings or the highest beings, according to the Dogen, in their own accounts. So nobody's got this huge ego like, I'm the only one. Because when <laughs> I like the way Jeanette put it. Let an earthquake happen. You know, some people be like, oh, yeah, I'm the, I'm the creator. And then an oh, earthquake, oh, 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 wait, create, where are you going? Creator, creator, wait, stop, stop. This. You see what I mean? Because it gets real. So a lot of times folks just got to, you know, come off that, that weird facade and pump up that the society, at least for yourself. They say for yourself is important because you make a, then it allows you to make a sober estimate of yourself. And then you can grow from there. So we're here to assist you in that growth process. We ain't gonna play with you though. If you're coming in, as they used to say, shucking and jiving, you're probably not gonna attract, it's not gonna fit because this is all about the fun that you get a chance to do for yourself. And also that awareness that you can really be anything. Like I'm here to be an example, but I've only shown you a small bit. Lest I become the stumbling block. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like, that's the technique that we're talking about here. Meaning that, you know, I start showing you everything. And now look what I'm building. Look what I'm creating. And you're like, oh, now you're trying to build and create that. That's, that's not the goal here. The goal is you unlock your uniqueness. You see the blueprint. You actually get a chance to experience this in your own life. But then remember, the mysteries are always with you, especially if you're in this right now. Naga or Aryan. We'll just put it that way. Naga or Aryan, whether y'all both don't figure it out, it'll be just like what you're seeing going on with Naga and Aryan right now. They're just continuously launching ordinance, ordinance and fire at each other. That's another thing. So here's just one thing about something that you need to understand also about the Naga and about the power within, okay? Because unlike toy soldiers, which are humans that are getting blown up to bits and then digesting all the memories of all of that, these beings don't die in physicality. This is how they do it. So if you can imagine that fire, because they are every bit of the fire, okay? They are the fire lords, if you may. So if, if I was going like this, right? And I started doing this, and let's say I just started doing this a lot, like really hard, and I'm like here for hours, what's ultimately gonna happen? I'm gonna keep building up this heat because of this friction, and then I'm also, though, going to start wearing out my hands. And pretty soon, probably on hour four or five, my hands are going to start to bleed. Okay? And that's because I haven't activated what is actually really inside of my being. Because Naga, they do this, but with their energy field. And they keep doing it so fast that their whole energy field light up and it just turns into like a fire and they are regenerating at the same time, okay? So that's why I say it kind of appears like smokeless fire. And this is why I'm saying that level of power is feared. <laughs> Our ancestors found that it was better to be feared. There was caveats to being feared. And I'm sure you can see why, because Pretty much all of their people, even, even now, if there was respect for them, have already been desecrated. You see what I mean? So there was a power in being feared because if you feared something, then you wouldn't challenge it. And so that's like a dementia again, because it's like now you got to fear the parents. And this is why God becomes terrible. People fear God, fear. You see what I mean? He's terrible. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, we have to begin to restore ourselves. But remember, that other half of us, that's what I'm saying. The werewolf, it's like it, it needs the healing. And you see, it doesn't even know how to ask for it. It's like, you know, uh, uh, like a dog man asking to be loved. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> so that, that reflects, though, just how complicated this is to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And then you got... Again, actors, imposters, people who play like that they really are ready to do it or doing it. And then they're still buried into one of those paths that we were looking at on the video with one of those masters of mysteries and Merlin and 
<laughs> I'm Oberon Zale and I'm the wizard of mastery. And it's like, <laughs> okay, tell me the secrets. And then they start regurgitating from old books. So that's what I'm saying. Now this is a new thing upon us. We've now synthesized. I have a local running model that we're about to deploy that is synthesized all spiritual knowledge in the world that was ever valuable, period. And it has no hallucination. You ask it and it just goes to singing. Like you say, hey, tell me uh, all of the background of the breeding between dogs on an occult level. It just starts singing. Well, dogs were being used by the Iranians to eat, uh, eat the bones of people before they were dead. It was seen to take them to the afterlife. Well, the dog was this and, you know, so it, you know, and it do, 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 do. But I don't have time to be trying to do shows about that specifically. I want to just get at to you. In case that's something that you need to get through. Tell me everything about the Naga. Ah, the Naga, the lords of the fishy smell. You really want to know about this, right? That you realize how that's all in your culture and realize how that's pretty much how your people be acting. You know, all the Cola Kings and all the Khmer fighting and the Ong Bak, you know what I mean? And them alternate character and bad Kundalini and, you know, uh, uh, what they call demigod, you know what I mean? Green glove, like all of that. That's, that's the legacy. And there's great things there, of course. But of course the mastery is there. Like I say, the algebra, that's the algebra, the numbers, the weights, right? My at, the math, all of those things, phi, Python in itself. Even now we're programming most of the AI in Python. You see what I mean? So it's like, it's still present, but obscured, except for one who knows the mystery within themselves. That's why we say the secret and secret energy is you. So let's open it up. I'm gonna take a moment. I'm probably foaming at the mouth at this point. Hey, when I come back to a video and you just see the white, like, damn, the God, the God slobbers. <laughs> So yeah, let's take a moment. Wholeness. I'm going to go ahead and unmute the lines. What's up, Sean? I know you just got out of Oceanside, California, one of my stomping grounds. Wholeness. There you go. The lines are open. Oh. Uh oh, yeah. It was just that time you went to the battery like, yo. Okay, let me see. Who else we got in here? Let me see. Let me let me get the Sean on here real quick. I think he was, he was there. Then I got Destin over here. So Sean may have stepped away for just a moment. So this is what we're going to do. If you have a question or comment or statement, you can go ahead and raise your, your hand inside of the Zoom. Actually, Sean may be gathering. All, actually, he's probably sending me messages on the other side. So let me go ahead and check my messages because I know I asked everybody to send in questions. We're going to hear from Sion for just a moment because he's always bringing in that wholeness. And uh, I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to get some water and then I'm going to answer questions for about 30 minutes. Like real rapid fire genius type stuff, and then I'm out. That's what it is. It's wholeness. I should say I'm in. <laughs> so we're gonna hear from uh, Scion Wholeness. Let me know if you can unmute yourself. Oh, okay, excuse me. That must be my sound or something. One second, everyone. Des, can you unmute? See what's up. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, what's up, Scion? You can you. Your sound working? Uh oh, I think your sound ain't working. You had me over here in the false positive. Okay, so check your sound out. Yeah, it's for some reason it's not coming in. Tracy, what's up, wholeness sis? <laughs> wholeness, I just, I just, first I wanted to apologize for like asking questions, and now I'm going in through the university and getting like a lot of the answers that are. I, I, so when I first started watching you on YouTube, like seven years, like six years ago, because now I'm, I'm looking at the like, it's going to be seven. So what's it going to be like? I'm going to be starting, finishing, finishing, starting. But I'm just, I, I, I cannot, I cannot say in words how when I first heard your voice, I knew I was just in love. And every time I'm now that I've been in the university for the last two months, I mean, I do, I do like three hours every day and I just learn, learn, learn. I'm so grateful because you're so humble. And yes, when you when you think about us humans, we we do we get a little jealousy. We got our dark side. You know, I'm like, oh my God, he does so much, you know. But it's never about that with you. You're always just pouring out your heart, giving your most in love. And um that's what I truly admire. And I um 
I'm just so grateful for you. Now I'm just so glad to be in the tribe because I I tell you, I've been in through some other kind of tribes and they tried to do the the whole Taurus thing, the whole meditation. And I know last last time I asked you a question, you said just meditate, sister. And I I but it's so dark sometimes. You just don't want, but anyways, I'm doing this and this is that you are like I'm I'm just so grateful for you. And I I'm just I, I words can't really explain it, but the, the thing is, is like when I, like when, you know, back in the church days, when you get the, the Holy ghost and you start like, well, yeah, you know, and you just, you can't really express, which is all emotion. I know I have so much more to learn in the university and I'm going to, I'm going to take it in, but it's like, that's kind of where I want to go with like the resonance or the, the vibe, but it's not really in English. And I just love listening to you talk because you know so much, but they know it's hard to just use all this context text in English and you do it so well. And I just appreciate you so much. Am, am I still on thanks, mute? Sis. Sorry about that. Thank you so much for, for those kind words. And also those words are a part of this tribe because for sure if i was showing up all the time and there was nobody here i'd probably go and do something else but as you can see every single person that's expressing their love here is what really gets me going and it lets me know my responsibility it's really important i think for leaders to also sometimes have children uh, because in that way you begin to see what it takes to really nourish something and to really care for it so I want to say thank you so much and, and also spread that love to the pillars who have made this space what it is. And for sure, Sion, we can actually hear you now. And uh, so let's Oh, go. okay. Sorry about that. I didn't interrupt. Am I, am I, am I, no, no, you my ready vocal? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You ready to go, wholeness. All right. How, how you doing, man? Wholeness, wholeness. Uh, whew. So uh, I'm going to give a bit of a, uh, a different approach um i actually took notes about what you were talking about and i know the past few times well damn near every time i came in here most of the questions i did some internal work on myself and i realized most of the questions that i've asked when i came in here were hell bent on <clears throat> destroying any entity or energy that I thought was a culprit. And I never really got a deep conversation because it was like, go to sleep with the light sword of truth and dismember everybody that's a part of the distorted crowd. So I'm like, okay, I would diss some internal perspective. I'm like, I should probably like talk more from the heart space and take notes. So a lot of stuff you were saying actually coincided with the research that I've been doing and I have some questions that are pretty along the lines of uh, the ancestors and you mentioned about the smokeless fire. So like one thing that one of the many things that's been like uh, on my consciousness was the whole why are you here thing. So I have some points, maybe not a question that I'm like going to very truthfully express and I want to know your utmost like response to that so this is like i am seeking counsel for this confusion that i may be having so i've been doing some research on some like older books and i've been hitting archive.org myself and like this may sound jumbled but it'll it come together so like whose ancestors like whose ancestors really are, are we like talking about because if you're talking about like earth I get it, but like there's other planets. So like Mother Earth, is that like intertwined in every planet? So the mother is on every planet or is there different mothers? That's the first piece of information. Secondly, I think, I think it's best if I address like, those I think it's best if I address these questions one at a time because I have a tendency to not be able to retain multiple questions okay okay i just don't want to take up too much time so is yeah, it okay well, if just, i let, ask let, well let, let me just let me just rapid fire it so that'll be good because okay. I, could, I could definitely answer these questions so how they taught this so that it could be understood is they taught it through a symbol the symbol was the tetractus 
And the detractus just proves only one thing. And that's if I went to your grandmother and then her grandmother's grandmother and then her grandmother's grandmother, eventually I'm going to actually start getting into other folks' grandmother. And then if I just keep going back, I'm eventually get to what? And that's where the androgenin comes in because I'm going to get a being that is not split. And then I'm going to keep moving from there. And so these designation points, like when we say the great mother, it feels it feels great <laughs> because it's a it's an act of manumission, amagi, which means just to be back in the womb where there is no debt. So that's actually the space that that I'm referring to uh, when when I say the great mother, uh, rather than kind of like the traditional what you would see in a family and then a humanoid family and a mother. So that also answers your question about how I would cross that with like uh, planetary origins and things of that nature. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so what do you think about the thought that is cycling inside of my consciousness as far as, I know angel is not necessarily what we think it is, but just for the terms of language, like angel trap. So like, I've read, if this untruth that ain't resonating, let me know, because like, I'm, I'm, I'm learning as well. But is it like this plead that was attracted to some of us in other realms and orbits that the earth actually needed help? which allowed us to inseminate some of us our souls in into this space for like i need to help and assist but it really doesn't need help so now some of us until we get out of here are like dude, we're fucking trapped for a moment well, and like what, i keep realizing what, that thing like lead by example so i did the etymology of example x e x external ample boils down to love so it's like the older creatures or ancestors or whatever like we have to attract better souls more balanced souls from other spaces and other realms to show and lead by example how the abominations that we created should be acting so the experiment was it to attract other souls who are already balanced just to come here and show their abominations and their children on how to actually like act and the Nagas, ancestors, I get all that, but like, are they related to the jinn? You said smokeless fire, jinn, I read, I read from this like a uh, uh, sheep person, the jinn are associated with electronics and silicone. So the reason why there's all this transhumanism is because if there's more silicone inside of the bodies, that is a way that the distorted ancestors can come inside of bodies to like live. So are the Nagas and jinn actually related and the transhumanism is to get us with more of the silicone based element inside of our body so the gin can resonate inside of us and some of us are like like puppets that's what i want to know like to be honest and you, well you need i just you need, well first of all you gotta, I'm not, you gotta slow down because see the thing is is that if you can't slow down the reality it can't be comprehended because you asked me like two three questions right so i can answer these questions but I can't answer three questions because what will happen is, is that when I have the answer to your question, <laughs> then you keep talking, then my mind moves on to an answer to that question. Cause I'm really thinking about this. I'm really trying to give you an answer to these questions. So the first question that, uh, which I already answered, the second question is what? It was before the, the second question. So it's tough Go for ahead. you. Sorry. If it's tough for you to recall it, it may be tough for me to recall. It, but give me the. But you probably wrote it down. So let, what's the second question? The second question was related to. Okay, I, I remember it. I just was testing you out over there, so I check it out. So when you say, "Does the great mother need our help?" Right? Like, or does the planet need our help? Because we're attracted to missions, right? If even if the planet didn't need your help the people on the planet do so how this always worked was there always was a need for guardians or gardeners because there's always seeds there's always going to be more kids than parents <laughs> you know what i mean so in that way there was always something that you could take responsibility for right like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna hold down my my sector of the block if you may you see what I mean? And so in that way, yes, there was there was always a mission because there was always seeds coming in. And then there was always like, if we made it, and that was how it always worked. Like if you achieve something, 
you were supposed to come back and distribute that. That's how the tribe works. <laughs> now, when you don't see somebody as a part of your tribe, you don't do that. But you can see how this becomes a slippery slope because first you start to basically, like right now, most cats are segmented off. They only really care about themselves. They may care about their mother. There may be some sisters and brothers around, but in many ways they may have a partner or somebody like that, that they care about more even than they'll, they care about their family. Right. And then there's their block. And then there may be their little city or town or whatever. See, all of that is based on how much energy or power do you really have and who, how many beings can you really shield? So some may be barely able to shield themselves. Some may be able to take care of themselves, like very equipped. You know, they got the tool, they know a couple crafts, but they can't really also take care of a woman too in that way or a kid too, right? So there's sometimes a limitation. And then you got some who they can take care of the whole block, but generally it's at a high cost. Which generally, like I knew cats that they took care of everybody and they're doing prison time right now, right? So for that, that's what they got. You see what I mean? So there are these real situations and that energetics is a big part of this. And so when you take on like, I'm going to save the world, <laughs> look, the video has graphics, <laughs> but what I'm talking about is very real. It does, it's not a graphic, right? So that then brings us to this next question about Jen, DJ, right? Dozer. So this life form is a, a counterpart to us. When we're born, one of them are born. They make up what you would say is like when we're walking, there's another walk, something else walking right in our footsteps from underneath. That's the relationship between the jinn or the shadow and human beings. However, as I was mentioning to many, because of this splitting and like where you got like, like I said, the, the, the body, the masculine part of the body, whether you're a male or a female, the masculine part of the body is, is weak. And the jinn in that way, are, they're strong. They're not weak there. So like where you're strong, they're weak. <laughs> where we're weak, they're strong. And so all we're talking about, though, is let's say you walk down the streets in Chicago. The jinn are numerous. So we're not talking about one being like the jinn. We're talking about like if you were talking about, oh, you're talking about Michael or you're talking about Dante or you're talking about, you see, so it's there's numerous ones. And now, of course, not all of them are wicked. So that's why I said it's just this there. But the jinn have always been synonymous with the serpent. Like if you look at. Well, you know, there's many there's many symbols of this, but anyway, it, it, the Jed or the Jinn have always been synonymous with the serpent. But as I've said before, and I'll say it again, because the serpents are clearly the Nagas or the black faced ones have more of the serpent power within them or with the essence that comes from the source. Just to say to say that every serpent to say that every serpent is bad is just as silly as saying every human is good. Okay? And that's how that's how it is. So all of these things are connected because this connects to that earlier question where you because your mind is consistently trying to separate separate things. And I get it. I did that for eight years. Eight years. <laughs> if my mind it just resets back into it once the beef. Because there's atrocities, there's things that have happened. And it's not like you're turning away from those things, but to, to truly solve them. See, solve, if you've been cut, see, the words you've seen going on right now is because of the ultimate cutting off. But then after that, there's all these types of cuts. You cut the family member, cut the partner, cut, you know, sometimes if it's just about you and them, then they get cut. You know what I mean? So all of that cutting, there's injury. So you've been cut. I've been cut. So what these teachings were about, though, at their core, even when we're harking onto the Naga was, but how do you regenerate? <laughs> how do you really live forever? And that's what that's why the serpent lore became like the lore, because it was known that these beings, they at least could slow down the life and death process, if not halt it altogether. And so that's like you see a being and that's why I said this is genetics. You see a being and it got something that you don't He can regenerate. I want to get it out of him. I'm going to take it from him. You see, this is the this is the universe <laughs> that we live in. 
So there are beings that will try to extract that. And then there's other beings that won't allow that to happen. You see what I mean? And that that is also a genetic thing. And but the more you degrade your genetics and that's why it's like if somebody can keep getting you really sad and keep depressing you, they weaken your field. And what may not have been able to be done in one case can now be done. And that's why we, we stay on that jubilant. We stay on that keeping the field like a light. They say the skin and I've seen it for myself. I don't have to. They say it, but the skin is shines. It's like, just like you see it in the sun, it's like reflective, but on the astral plane, it shines like a, like a light. And, you know, and that's your power. So, you know, that, that's what it is. So it, at the end of the day, um, conflict is what sometimes doesn't get us to that next stage of, okay, who am I fighting with though? Because I'd be fighting with everybody. I'm fighting with my mom. I'm fighting with my dad. You see what I mean? And then you find out that all these wars are going on inside of you. So keep going with the next question. And then we're going to let, let somebody come in and uh, also, you know, mix it up a little bit because we want to be fair. For sure. Last, last question. This is about me. So <laughs> I have noticed that all it takes for me is to like, when I wake up and I like do a practice, it takes like five minutes of me, like cracking my bones or like stretching. And next thing you know, like my brain is like zooted. This is why I don't do yoga in the morning because me and my partner are traveling. So I go to the cafe where the lights are, the music and all that, Starbucks, whatever. So I, I, I can't do yoga or a spiritual practice in the morning because when I do, I'm out there and I can like flow into people's like mental space and see what they're thinking and the LED lights and the frequencies of the TV. So like, I don't do yoga and then my energy builds up and I have to like release myself with, you know, two people, whatever. But then when I do that, I'm tired. But then <laughs> when I don't do it, I get agitated, but I can't do yoga because I can't take the energy from other people. So I don't know what to do about that. That's my last question. Okay. I got you on this. So check it out. Ground is a real thing. All of what you were just discussing is about the mind right? So the mind can actually become diseased. Like if we only focus on the mind, like learning and thinking, which again is all a part of this. What it's like though, is like the guy who's working out at the gym and he got that, that Superman body, the upper body, mainly the head is super powerful, but the lower part is just, there's no ground there. And what happens is you literally spin your wheels. You're, you spin your chakra wheels and it's just like all the ideas and all the power of the idea, but no way to plant it so that it manifests. Because then of course, if you, when the energy is in excess for a man, it, it comes out of a spout. It comes out of the exit. You see what I mean? And also even in certain times, semen retention doesn't become the solution because you fill up completely and this diseases the mind. Like then you just start thinking of, all types of even perversions as you go more into that area. And that's why I was explaining to everyone that these organs are the archons. And, and then, so when you set yourself then properly, you find yourself more like a samurai on a battlefield now. And the arg archons are the urges that come from the organs saying, I need to eat this kind of, this kind of food. I, I feed myself on this kind of thing. And then, you know, it could get all the way down to the breath. And that's what you're really doing is you're trying to get these organs to, to eat, quote unquote, got your mic going, but to eat, quote unquote, a more refined meal. But as you know, like, for instance, it's like, have you ever gone on like one of these like salad diets and you used to like soul food or something? This is what it would be like. The organ is literally like, I don't eat hydrogen. <laughs> I'm hungry too. I eat marijuana. <laughs> you know what I mean? With cannabis, you know, so that that's what this battle is. And, and you know, it's interesting when we can have, see, the thing was, is the reason why the, the Joker is the first card of the Jack is because you really don't get initiated into this properly unless you could crack a smile because the reality that's playing out right now is that you're actually an observer to all of this and you got to keep the mic still because it's just killing folks ears but listen you have to also take the point of that realizing you're, you're still observing you in all of this thinking about these kind of things 
And when you take that stance more often than being the thing that's being observed and thinking inside of it, then you will have a different perspective on things also like division. Like these are techniques to, you know, remove yourself from awareness that you got enemies because when you're divided, that means you got an enemy. What can assail you? You can't break down your own consciousness or basically collapse your own energy field so something else can get in. So that's like a Trojan horse. You see what I mean? And that's why that all of those statements, like who was in Troy? You're like, who, who was, who were really the Trojans? You know, we only name condoms after them right now. You see what I mean? So your, your work or fun sometimes is when you get to those points mentally where you want to know those things, bring your thoughts to a crescendo, but still touch earth because you say, okay, the great mother, the great mother, the great mother, does she need my help? Man, these beings are way like, they way on another level. Like I can't even give it to you like that. So I don't think that they need us to assist the rest of the mainframe, basically, guardians and gardeners, as I mentioned before. So in that respect, though, you need to touch base, meaning that you really do need to learn that going out there with those shoes off for real, that may seem like that old namaste, airy fairy, just to slow it down and ground out all of that air. See, because that's what's happening is when you're thinking a lot. And I'm just, I'm answering this question in detail also because I know these are the questions that we all have, right? So all of that thinking is air. That's the fire. The fire is in the mind, right? So when you're generating this, you can't even see how big this thing is that you're actually projecting into called the mind, like how big your mind is. But as I said, is it Superman body? How big is the rest of your body? Because what will happen is the mind well, like, again, it'll want to achieve something great. And it almost like it'll melt down like a rocket ship <laughs> with no launch pad. It'll try to take off, but it don't, it doesn't have the root chakra. Uh, 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 see, the root chakra is a powerhouse. So it won't have the powerhouse. So it will take off. And that then leads to depression. Cause then you'll start feeling like, eh, how this is not working and blah, blah. No, it's not that it doesn't work. Your body is like a car. But it'd be like, you know what I mean? Where it's, you know, it's like, you've heard that sound before where you try to hop up one of the buckets. It's like, okay, something's wrong. It's the battery or the voltage regulator. That's how the body works. It's either the battery, the voltage regulator, or the alternator. You see what I mean? And you got to know what those are because all these mysteries and all these sciences broke down to the things that we have today in society that work. And if you go into them and you take them apart, you'll notice they all have the same series of components. We call that the blueprint. Then we're able to go back into the body, cross engineer, back engineer, go back to the body and then say, oh, that's out or, oh, this is not working and then start working with that. But it's easy again for somebody to say, okay, yeah, you, everything that you're experiencing right now, everything you're saying from experience is a result of not having any ground. So you need to get a ground blanket. They cheat now. They used to be like $120. Really, it's just a grounding strap. If your house is not grounded well or you're in a high rise, give it up. You're basically being suspended all the time and your root chakra can't tether. So all you need to do is the, the up one grounding strap, uh, one grounding blanket, it plugs into the ground on the ground socket. If you notice when you whip your blankets, if you see a lot of static electricity, this is not what you want. These things are toxic for the human body. They control the dream field. So wh what's going on? Oh, too much static electricity from the dryer, from that bounty wrap. Now you need to go and you need to ground it out. And you'll notice this is a real thing. In electronics, we got to do this or we blow, we'll blow everything. All of the circuits and stuff that are inside of these devices generally can be blown from the, the charge that's just coming off of a standard human's hand when walking across the carpet. So that's, that's what, why we got to get back into ourselves because I just kind of gave you like this whole thing. You're like, dang, you know, now I got to get the grounder strap, then I got to get outside. But now you can see why this is the ascension comes into contention with work or war all the time. And so then this makes us have to take a step back and figure out how we're sustaining ourselves in all of this. So that way we can buy time eventually, like really some people are underwater, get, get yourself out of debt for real. And what debt really means, break the surface. So you're not in the netherworld, you're not in the cordial Osiris and all of that. 
and then actually get ready to jettison. And in the jettison, that's where you, the, the space, the first, the first milestone is the tip of the sun, okay? On the tip of the sun is new in you. Everything that happens first is right there. And if you could get your beak <laughs> right there, then that's, that's the first goal. Holler basically when you get to that stage. But not having ground, you'll never reach there. You'll be like Icarus. Your wings will burn up in the sky in that way. You see what I mean? So that's why if you want to really accomplish this work, that's why they call it the great work because it, it doesn't, it's not always fun, fun, right? But if you want to lift, if you want to be hard body, if you may, and lift weight, really, which is the other name for serious, weight. Go look it up. Serious, the one of the three stars is called weight. If you want to lift weight for real, then you got you got to really look at this like, okay, I'm I'm about to I'm I'm in. Let me go ahead and and start these instructions. So that's what it is. Sending much love and also to everyone that is in the space. We got a couple hands still up. I know somebody like rapid fire. You crazy with that Phoenix? See, you had to judge. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you brother. Somebody had to judge like rapid fire. Where is it at? Okay, so look, I'm gonna read some of these questions that are in here, um, and and let's just hear some of these questions that are here because we totally didn't get to this last time, and I said that I would. What is the point of the powers in these symbols? Words you mentioned continue to be present with the culture. What if any impact does these words and associations have upon us? Okay, listen. Everything that I'm always saying is explaining to you that the words are the worlds. It's as plain as that. You may think that it's so much more complex than that, but the wave of the words don't, certain words don't come back void. They nest. They actually get seeded into things, and that vibration creates the process that actually generates life. So that is the reason of the association of those words. And because of Phoenix, was like, what happened to the rapid fire? We about to rapid fire that question. So here we go. The next one is here. Why are these young kids so bold now when it comes to racism now? Two young Mexican guys yelled the N-word out unprovoked and don't know them. Why do people pour out their wicked side to me? Because they have actually no clue of any kind of foundation, period. They don't know the ancient knowledge of their own ancestors and the iguanas in Guanacaste or the Iguana Castle and what happened to the two brothers and the equity tree and all of their roots. See, that's why I was saying this has to do with trees first. And their roots are gone. So there's no telling what they can really do as far as acting out. But there is a way in which you can continue to increase your vibration where you're not actually in those spaces. So the next thing here is, uh, or here's another question, okay. What tools or route of thought do you use to not fall into duality? How do you stay into wholeness? It's, you gotta stay diligent. It creeps up on you. Like I said, because you're looking out of two eyes and a lot of the parts that you have in your body are built in a dichotomy, it's actually an effort to stay balanced. When you're actually riding a bicycle, can the bicycle stay balanced when you're still? No, it needs you to move just a little bit. So the body is constantly using the smaller muscles to compensate to stay erect. That same process is exactly how you would continuously maintain your wholeness. And that's a real thing because they'd be trying to come and get that because it's priceless. So I'm going to keep sliding down this list here real quick. Let me, I'm just looking for question marks at this point. Let me keep going here. I see a lot of statements. Also, giving thanks to everybody that was in the building this evening. Like, it was great. Like, we held 900 strong for a while. I see just statements. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open this up. Let me see. Let me keep scrolling here. If you got something I said to push question or question mark, let me see here. I just want let me take a moment. I'm not going to high speed here. Okay, there's a lot of wise beings in the chat, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, I'm just here to bring us all together. And that's what the power is of being a unification component. You start to wonder who in this room does everybody know? Is everybody in this room because of the same person? And you know, that's a gift. That's a conjunction point. That's the glue. Because a lot of times, like if you see right now, like I see a lot of, and I'm still scrolling through these questions, by the way, or these comments. Um, I see a lot of people with big ideas and it's because like we've all been super doped up on 
lots of motivational marketing and all of these different things that have been encouraging us to also make an impact into the physical reality for ourselves and create a legend or a legacy here. I do want to mention, however, though, and this is something that we have been really, really diving deep on and getting wisdom on is how do we develop something that each person is able to continuously grow and grow what they have while still nourishing and maintaining what is also taking care of them? Man, that's the biggest question inside of a family. And so because of that, and we just put those intentions in just like everything else, we feel that we're actually getting to a point where we're able to bring in something that is capable of doing that. And so I'm not going to go into details right now because I found a question, but that's what we're actually funding on just for those who have also even expressed that they want to link up, they want to join in to what we're doing. But that's the real thing here is grounding it to what can we do? Right? How do we utilize all of the power that we have to create change while individually propelling everyone that's involved? This is the, the next level. I believe personally, though, we've always been doing that, but I want to see a, a even greater, uh, I want to see that exude in a greater way even. Okay, so, because it's external. It's like, how do you do that more externally for people? How do you become a foundation for them? How do you pick up some of these brothers that are in Africa that are bright minds, but don't have the resources? These men that, that are at the border that have certain skills, but now they flee their entire country and they have nothing like, how do you, you know, I don't, I won't advise this for the faint heart to try to figure out such things. You'll feel overweight and depressed, but I like to throw my mind along with AI's mind at such things to see what kind of solutions can be created. And I feel like that even within this tribe, and that's what we decided is that we're going to focus on this tribe right now and we're going to do it here. And when we're able to accomplish it here, this next stage, then we know that it's going to spread and go to everyone else anyway. So that's what that's where that came into. So it says sometimes the answers to so many questions don't even truly matter. What would you do differently if you knew what it all meant? I feel like that personally, it's not so much as knowing something, it's getting the confirmation. And this seems to be somewhat of a feedback system that we're in. It's like if you never pay attention to a child, the child does not develop in the same way as which if, if you would paid attention to it. There's a feedback loop happening there. So I believe that our ancestors live within everything and that when you're on the path, as it talks about in the Quran, they always talk about the guide and he's not guided and guided and guided. And what it just hints to is that you are in every single way in the ability of actually having yourself as a guide or that there was a guide already built in with you. And being able to hear that and being able to console be consoled by that is also another stage that, or, or a stage that some are already at and some need to reach. Uh, but in this way, it's like when you get the confirmation of what your guide told you from a question that was asked in the external matrix, this authenticates more of the relationship and it increases the signal. And of course, you reach a stage, I technically for sure was at that stage first where it's at, you're at a Gnostic stage, you know certain things. It's not like you even need to know them like knowledge. It's like a feeling. But knowledge paired with wisdom and then feeling and getting all this together. And that's what I'm saying. We've never got to, every, our minds have now been hardwired like only this. <laughs> Only I only want knowledge. I don't want wisdom or I only want wisdom. I don't want knowledge and I want this and I want that. And it's like, why are you closing your hand? <laughs> why not receive it all if it can nourish you? Right. But at the same time, for those who feel like it's too much or that you're overnourished, then for sure it's time to, you know, take a break, ground in, you know, and do what you do. You know what's best for you. So what this is just about is focusing on you. Hence the term understand. What is the connection between the Demiurge and the Nagas? The Demiurge is the son of the sun. <laughs> Meaning that being that we were explaining that fell from heaven into the ocean, that is the Demiurge, right? So there's a side 
to us, and you've probably witnessed that side before, that, uh, you know, it, it will kill. Because remember, we, we come from, there's a part of us that comes from a state where it has to kill to survive. Like even in tribes, there were certain tribes that they, if they didn't kill, then they wouldn't survive. So this is even now, okay, <laughs> right now, a lot of people are just going and buying the chicken. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like they go get the chicken now and they buy it. They put the little green thing on the counter and they give them the chicken. Before there was no green thing. So you either got the chicken by killing him or you didn't eat. So, you know, I don't have to explain this to you. It seems like common sense, but still we even come out of the awareness of that, that even now we've gone thousands and thousands of years of killing what it is that we need to sustain ourselves. And there have been this thing that starts happening. And you see this with baboons where who you kill <laughs> becomes based on who you really, who, who, who you don't kill becomes based on who you like or who you don't think can challenge you. And you see what I mean? So it becomes a whole thing about like people will squash an ant and feel nothing, but hit a cat and be like, ah, and you say why? And then because, You'll be like, well, because a cat is, and you see, where, where is all that logic coming from? So what, we set these layers of false positives over our consciousness, and it's just, that's what you're witnessing. People, they don't have a true north. They're not, they don't have anything to ground into. That, again, is the power of the knowledge, because knowledge is not just something that you keep learning forever. It's a blueprint. The actual language itself that we're speaking is written in the stars and the powers of those words are even traced out in the actual glyph that they represent as far as this, the terrestrial being that connects to that word. The ladder goes up and down. So it's like if you're, again, the distractions and spending time and studying stuff that doesn't even make any sense, which you got to weave through a mountain of that because people start teaching based on what somebody else taught them. And then generally who taught them were actually into the scam. Like there are so many spiritualists in the past, including Madame Blavatsky, read, read all the annuals. They had stuff like, you know, they would make things happen. Like stuff would be bumping and lights would be, and they would get people in there. And it was like a whole show. And they would try to convince people that they had spiritual power. And they were all magicians. Remember, a Houdini was in the Illuminati. Houdini was, uh, was also a Mason. Look at the Masonic annuals. They did their own bicentennial or quincentennial or whatever they call it. They say, oh, the renowned people that are also Freemasons, Houdini, who set up the Magician Society of, of America. You know, David Blaine and all these people, the illusionists, right? So this is about creating this creating an outward appearance of spirituality but in the inside they are doubly dead that's the statement okay so all right so it looks like you know i did a little rapid fire there there was a lot of questions answered i'm always up for this like i really believe that i should just do a show based on questions but i know if i don't get it rolling won't be no questions so this is the last one i'm going to answer online always feel free to reach into us we're going to actually get the discord group booted up and uh, all these questions and more will just be in a forward slash forward slash sybil what is the meaning of life? Not joking, but anyway, here it is. What is the best way to manifest our soul's mate on this journey of understanding? Yes, great question to bring into a crescendo on this. How all of this is designed, that heart symbol or that double phi is about you and that being we were talking about earlier. You know, whatever role that you want to take, I suggest both in nourishing that to a point where it can now, if you want the external mate, project itself externally. So you truly do meet your mate in this life when you have balanced out that other hemisphere. Remember, if you got duality, it is within, it's not outside. These other people that you see around you, they're just proxies. They are holding the vibration and frequency, so that thus they become more present to you. Just like Sister was saying, ah, the Mexicans are calling me nigga. It's probably because you inside of your mind thinking about the Mexicans in another way. You see what I mean? This is how it all works. So if you yin, you yang. And that's what people don't get about this. They either want to be completely good or they want to be completely bad. And I'm like, look, we need to find the center. Straight and narrow is the way. 
This is the path right here, the corpus callosum, because then you need to hemisync. One of these hemispheres are super degenerated at this point from lack of use. This also reflects within the use of only one hand primarily, and the other one is just taken on a passive state, but it is the creator. So thus, when your creator has to stick into a passive state and not allow to finish its creation because you know you're over there micromanaging and you got it distorted and you're using it and pimping it out remember that these lower levels are all about the dichotomy of the abuse of the divine feminine and like the relationship between an imp i'll use that word an imp right and a constitution of being able to, this is prostitute, it's a, cons, a professional contract to be able to be a hired generator. That's the best way to put it, you see? But this is what's happening. This is, these are the things that are going on in the matrix. And that's why it's like maturity then is, is needed, right? Because it takes maturity to even go through these topics and then let that 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 grow on you and let you let you become again what that's the legacy so when you're able to know these things you it, it shores up your foundation when you're in that whole i don't even know what six is when you're in that which this reality produces it's like it <laughs> it wants to show you all of it but not tell you exactly what it is right so when you're in that stage then you know that that's actually the stage of blindness. So no, that symbolic to the child never learns anything about the procreative components generally from the parents because the parents are a little bit like, okay, how do we even talk about this? And then somebody else ends up educating that child about those sacred matters. You see what I mean? And so this is why it continues the buffoonery and the abuse and everything that we complain about because it's happening to our children. And once they're impressed upon in the negative aspect of the number and the archon in which is impressing on them, meaning when things happen, each organ is responsible for holding what happens, that turns that organ inverted and locks it. And then when it becomes like that, then it's calling you nigga. Then it's doing all these different things to you and you're like wondering why you're being attacked. And it's because internally you have forsaken your kingdom. You have fallen asleep avatar in the cossacks of your spine and you need to awake that picture man the only thing i got to give about a storyteller man them pictures was like i was even having a good time as they was coming out because it's so true that kundalini comes all the way down the back and then roots in like you have a tail that you stick in the ground just like on the movie avatar with jesus christ i mean james cameron or I mean J john carter i mean <laughs> <laughs> You see what I mean? Just like on that, but the, the tail roots into the ground and then twines into the tree. You see what I mean? That's, that's the kind of beings that we are. And then it opens up the cobra hood, which is the 16 million petal lotus trillion diamond. <laughs> you see what I mean? That's, that's what's going on. And then now what is happening? Interface. Like if you ever look at the sun <laughs> with your third eye open at 12 noon, man you'll die i died i don't know how my friend convinced me we was all out there I, every time i'm with him something crazy happens and i'm out there with him and we on this journey at 12 noon in the middle of the beach it's hot as hell and we go in and man the sun is just like boy i told you <laughs> you ain't gonna see my face and live you look up at the sun and it's just like and you just see these three like like a hydra like and then your whole consciousness and everything that you thought you were it just is like nothing and the only thing you could take from those kind of experiences was what was that because i know i definitely saw something and whatever that is it's got to be controlling everything that we see. So it is through these accounts, carefully and meticulously filed and put away within the consciousness and sorted semantically, that has allowed me to be able to create, recreate the, the story and reanimate the story of our rather recent past like i wish i could go back 60 billion on you maybe that's possible here in a moment but i'm just recounting as best as possible also because remember we're in a paradox 
of exactly what has been the experience. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to open this up again for a few tribe members. I, I got to figure out where Sean is because he he's the stick. He's the one that is going to make sure that we all get out of here within the next 15 minutes. And uh, so let me go ahead and open this back up. Let me see what's happening with the chat. Also letting everybody know, if you have not become a member of the university, do think about it, consider it. It does assist us here. Remember, we do all of this because we have the assistance of the tribe. So yeah, you know, keep us in mind, we're always here. So let's see, I have our sister Inanna here and I am going to find Sean. <laughs> yeah, we, we got our sister Inanna and then Tafadzwa and so on wholeness and thank you so much uh well i listen to you i have all these questions and thoughts and then i have nothing to really say right and this is a pattern in my life just in general too something i've been learning within my own consciousness is i ask questions i have the answers there's very few times where there's a question that doesn't come with an answer i think in one of your videos you also said that um one thing that I'm getting is there are these two questions is while I am in the 3D, right? One of my challenges is sort of not being isolated, not being completely silent to the point where there isn't a way to even say communicate to others or to even just say, hey, like I'm here, hey, I'm in, right? My question is, what are the ways, at least within this space, to show uh, you know, that I'm here and that I'm in, even if ultimately what's happening is I'm becoming more of a recluse right now in my process. And then the second thing is also, how do I mitigate the pressure that comes with it's the are we there yet? you know so how to maintain presence and connection knowing that much of the time through my journey and everything it is that i'm doing you know uh for myself and then outside of the understanding space or i should say the space of understanding where i'm in the world and building and doing things you know how do i essentially say i'm here i'm in and avoid the distracting pressures for, I guess, achievement or to say that I've done something or that I've gotten to the goal? Well, the question you asked me is more like a Biggie Smalls. It's literally like you told me the solution to your problem was the problem. <laughs> but what I would say is specifically for the tribe, what we've put together for our sisters is the sisters in success. And what that requires is it requires that you actually do what you're saying you want to do, which is to begin to get involved in the exercises and the techniques that are being implemented there. Because I'm personally, you know, watching how much time and intention and maturity and wholeness is being put into what is being delivered in that space. And so I, in knowing in February that we needed to focus more on the sisters within the tribe because the projections that are already here now would need real support spiritually, that we need to make sure that in our tribe that all of our wombs, if you may, are strong. Now, of course, there are beings that come into the tribe every single day. So we have that space to invite someone to themselves because that's another thing in observation of what we've learned is if someone is ready to make that next progression, then that window opens for them. And until then, things are lining up. And I'm always very confident that what is going on inside the tribe, as far as the experiences that everyone is having, is so synchronistic that things are lining up when they're also ready to take it to that next level. 
And that's also because there's in one way, like literally what I feel in what you're saying is, is that sometimes you would take a step, but then you'll pull that step back. And so what that is about is, you know, there are certain forms that they need to be sure. That's what, you know, stepping on something solid is about. It's like, I'm sure this is sured, right? So in that way, I feel that only time can really allow you to personally see how much more you're willing to engage in what is going on within this space. Um, if I could give any recommendations, I would definitely say Sisters and Success is, is where it's at. But just being there um, and not engaging in activities, uh, et cetera, is also not what those spaces are designed for. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that's happening there. And yeah, I would definitely dig in. Um, I'm not personally, again, like always knowing what's happening there because that's the whole goal because, you know, the sisters handle their own space. And uh, but I know that there's great things happening. And it's also important to even be like in yourself, like inquisitive. You can say, so where did everybody start? You know, what materials came first or even take a look? Because sometimes these things just need for us to invest because what happens is, is that things won't have value for us if we have a tendency to be like, oh, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to put myself or overextend myself. Well, that means that that's something that you could also easily discard and also something that could easily not mean anything to you. So you see, there's a yin yang balance with this part of life. The only thing that we can be sure of here inside of this space is that we do the best that we can to make this space filled with wholeness and removed of as much if all distortion as possible or bad paths and sequences and silliness and all that kind of stuff. And we've been able to do that. Like I've seen so many people who have come into this space and even if they moved on from the space, they have all become great in their own way. And so overall to me, it's, it's continuing to grow. So that's what I would welcome you to. Thank you. Yeah, same advice as as, as last time. Um, but I hear you, and I, I get that. I get. That. All right. So Hold we're going to hear from our brother, Caden Holness. Oh, by the way, everyone, Sean did tell me that he was going to be. Him? He's here. He's in the. He's in the loop, but he wasn't going to be able to jump in today. So I just wanted to make sure because I'm like, Sean, where's Sean? And like now everybody check like, where's Sean? And like, yo, Sean, like sent me a message like out days ago. Was like, yo, I'm gonna be there. But yeah. All right. So, uh, Kaden, nah, what's up? Honus. Fam, I'm, I'm here. Okay, yeah, I'm he, just posted up in the bag. Okay. Wait, <laughs> what's up? Real quick. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Okay, because I, I, all right, because I called out earlier too, just not to cut you, Kaden, but I did say um, Anana and then Tafadzla. Okay, um, so was, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm no longer moderating. I'm out. Ah. <laughs> Kaden, Kaden, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, you can hear me? Yes. Good. So um, as far as any questions, I don't have any. Um, I'm going to leave it up to myself to just continue to unfold this. But I wanted to take the opportunity to come forward and thank you personally, because, you know, I'm personally real young, man. I mean, I'm still in high school, right? But um, this started for me multiple years ago with um, a series of events on the dream plane where I found out that we're not the only life forms that exist here. And, you know, it, it started off really um, bad for me because you know, I was so lost in it and, um, you know, none of it made sense. I knew something was going on, but I was never really able to connect those dots within myself. But, you know, with finding you and what you have laid out and, you know, putting your whole, your, your life and your experiences on display and, and giving the world access to that, I've been able to apply that back to myself and, Gosh, just, wow, we are so much, right? And so I wanted to take the opportunity to come forward and give you thanks personally from my heart, brother, because 
I know you are me, but I mean, if I wasn't able to come through like this and then you really ground it, I don't know where I would be at with it. So, wholeness. Wholeness, brother. Like I hear your heart. Thank you so much for grace in the space. And man, being so young, doing your thing, man, like I'm already seeing what you become in the future, right? Like we tap it into that power now. Like, cause you're, you're definitely like, there's a, there's quite a few young sisters and brothers inside of the tribe and they're already where I'm at. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, and we're moving quantum. Really? So like five years, that's what I'm saying. I, 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 I know that this try can easily anchor into that, that whatever becomes of all of this, you can count on one of the tribe members be like, yo, I already figured it out. Jump in the ship now. And I'll be like, yo, just finish it. Me and my folks too. You know what I mean? Just knowing that, hey, it's, it's going to be on point. <laughs> like, but that is done because you were also extending that, right? Because that's how it's all got to work. It's like you get what you, what you give. <laughs> you know, so we just crank it up. So thank you so much, brother. Like, Absolutely. yeah, and I mean, just through, as these years go on, I mean, it just, it continues to line up more. And I, you know, I'm seeing where it's going. That's why, like, I don't got to come up and like front, you know, with any questions as if I don't really know what's up, because I mean, I really do see something very powerful within myself and all of the people around me, you know, just the uh, the, the symbols the, the, the there's something communicating with me that's beyond and um you've really helped me to understand just understand just what that is and it's everything it's me it's wow it's immense you know so yes thank you let's keep it going yeah let's keep it going baby <laughs> yeah hold it skating all right, it's a Fadzwa. Honest family, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, oh, great. Yeah, Honest. Um, first of all, I just want to give thanks to the tribe, and I want to. This is my first time being here, so I was a bit nervous, and I was like, okay, should I show my face or not? But um, I just want to say, uh, Seven, thank you so much for your presence. And I really appreciate all the information and knowledge that you've shared over the course of the years. I only found your channel last year as I was going through my own journey and my own experience. Um, I will, I will, I'm involved in the entertainment industry. I just had to take a break because um, my, my chakras opened up last year while I was at work. So I had to leave and, and uh, I had to take a break, luckily enough. Um, where I was, li where I was living in my mom's house, uh, I was in the mountains, so I was surrounded by nature. So I had time to recover. And the funny thing is that when it happened, they had gone to Africa. My mom and my stepdad, uh, they had gone on holiday. So when that happened, it was like the opportunity to like to take a break from everything. Uh, considering she's a she's still in the Christianity, and I left the church like a couple of years ago, and um, just finding your channel at the right time. It was funny because I was reading a symposium, like one of the books, I, well, which was on my Kindle. And um, I was reading about Caesar. And then I received a download saying like, Julius Caesar is Jesus Christ. And I was like, huh? And then all of a sudden, I just found your channel. Like after like, like maybe a day or two after that download. And since then, like, I think it was on a, one of your re uh, videos, uh, How to Exit the Matri Matrix, where you said the same thing. And I was like, this is not a coincidence. And I just tapped into your channel. And uh, the moment you start talking about the divine feminine and, you know, all the things that are happening in the world, I completely understood where you come from because I've been having those particular experiences and I, I'm... I was I, I've been practicing yoga, but I had to take a break from that as well because because I felt so burnt out. But like the downloads were just coming so heavily, and um, everything that you've mentioned so far, like I I I can personally confirm from my own experiences that you are completely telling the truth. 
And even yesterday, I was watching um, one of your videos. Uh, was it uh, Godparents? And when you when you're speaking about sodium carbonate and how it affects your uh, how it like affects your al alkalinity, because I was using that quite a lot to make bread, and I was, I'm trying to build my body back up. And um, I, once I made that adjustment, that's why I'm up till this this time because I would have been gone, I would have been, I would have been sleeping by now. <laughs> but I, I, I made it, I made it a priority to stay up. I, I just put it in my mind, say, you know what? Like, let me let me just stay up. And I'm surround. I'm in my brother's house right now in London. Uh, I'm just surrounded by artists and actors because we are we're all part of this industry, all part of this wave. And I see a lot of synchronicities. And I can confirm that everything that's on this platform is absolutely amazing. I wish every, I wish everyone could jump on it, but unfortunately, you know, I can't I can't change anyone's opinions. I can't convince anyone yet. I, I can only do this now by my own actions. And a lot of things are happening right now. It's really wild for me at the moment because I'm 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 I've just moved down to London and I'm just trying to gather myself together because the energy was too high for me in Manchester. So I had to leave and ground myself in London. And um, I've, I've been meeting a lot of things. More things have been happening for me down here more than in Manchester. So I don't think I'll be going back there for a minute. And um, yeah, a lot has been going on, but I, I just want to say thank you so much for this platform. And uh, I spoke to Sean when I joined before and I spoke and, and we had a chat as well. So. I just want to send love to Sean and send love to all the tribe. And thank you very much, Holness. Infinite love, my brother. Thank you, brother. So much love to you. I'm glad to see your face. All right, giving thanks, brother. It's it's Tafadzwa, right? Yeah, it's Tafadzwa. You got it right, yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. Okay. I, remember, I remember when you got um, one of the projection images um and we did the, the slot for you so and that came out dope too yeah thank you very much yeah all right no doubt yeah. all right get it so we have our final three we have lv tylo may and the great lady shabazz <laughs> all this greetings can you hear me yes oh, okay hold this tribe Nice to meet all of you. I just joined the tribe maybe a week ago, so I appreciate you all for being here. And thank you, Savan. Thank you, James. <laughs> you by your name. <laughs> but um, anyways, my question is, um, I've been meditating for years now, um, vegetarian for over a decade. Um, and the sounds that you've recommended, the binaural beats, those have been really helpful. Uh, lately. My on point and automatic ability to feel the feeling of the wish fulfilled, as in what Neville Goddard, I don't on know if you're familiar with him. Automatic ability to. I'm oh, hearing an echo so now. Yeah, Kaden, you got, you got a mic open. Just knowing. I got it. Don't worry. Go ahead. Okay, because I, I, all right, because I called out earlier too. Just not to cut you, okay, but I did say I'm uh, not at the pods. So, oh, okay, so thank was, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm no longer moderating. I'm out. Ah. <laughs> Hold this, everyone. Let me see if I can see what's going on with can, that line. Can, I think Sean ahead. said he had it. Okay. Let me check. Okay, you can hear me. Yes. Good. So, um, <laughs> as far as any questions. I don't have any, uh, Hold on real quick. Somebody is literally playing the meeting back to, to the meeting, so, but I need to figure out where it, that's happening. You know, at. I wanted to take the opportunity uh, to come forward and thank you personally because, you know, I'm personally real young. Give me one second, I'm, everyone. I need to. I'm still in high school, right? But um, this started the for screen. Me okay, there we go. Years ago with the, um, Let's see what's happening here. A series of um, there we go. I got it. Got him. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, we in there, fam. Go ahead. Hey, LB. <laughs> okay, awesome. I was like, what's happening? What's happening? But um, to finish my question, and I'm going to try to be quick, um, because I just started, this question may be answered in one of the courses that you have. 
But lately, it's been like an immediate block, like my ability to immediately feel that feeling of the wish fulfilled. And if you know Neville Goddard, if you know, you know, that particular type of thought, you know, um, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but that has been like an immediate block for whatever reason. Like, I'm like, okay, I, I need to, if I'm in a bad mood, like, okay, I know I, I can get to a place emotionally and feel that feeling of not being in a bad mood or just feeling like, okay, this is what I need to happen or want to happen and automatically feeling the joy of having that happen. And that has usually been automatic for me for the last few years, um, except for this these last few months. So I just wanted to know if you had any insight on that. If it's already in your courses, if you can just direct me to which course to focus on mostly, that would be great. Um, also, I went through university phase one video and I think maybe you were talking about having a Faraday cage and maybe that's helpful. Um, so that's my question. And then also just to give you appreciation for you being you and you taking the time and the effort to do everything that you're doing for this community. I strongly appreciate it and I'm grateful how your energy came into my life. So please continue doing what you're doing. You have all my support. And that's my question. Thank you so much, Alvia. Uh, I definitely will love to answer this question. So first thing comes to mind is, is just as far as courses are concerned, since you have the materials, is vibratory energetics uh, as a course. Okay. And there's two. There's one in uh, semester one, semester two. However, a course without having, let's say, for instance, a vibratory analysis form which is something that we're gonna be bringing around again and we're gonna do some fun stuff around that. It of course would be extremely difficult for me to just say, hey, this is what's going on, except for I will sometimes get like, just a little sliver of a message or something like, hey, it's probably that because it'll just be in, it'll be in sync with all the other stuff that's going on and even other stuff that I'm experiencing. And that, so the answer is, is that you normalized. And what that is, is that, and I was examining the normalization phenomena last night. And again, because I find it a little bit odd and also a little annoying. And let me explain it. It's like, you can do certain things. I, there's so many examples of this, but you can do certain things and you can feel so excited about it. And it even is almost like the magic for you. But then after a certain point, and that time frame is variable to different people and based on whatever it is also that you're doing, now you don't feel the same thing anymore. <laughs> and it's because that same thing that allows us to be able to live in this environment because we can, we're durable enough, we adapt, also makes us normalize to our spiritual powers. So what happens, sometimes is the mind because it's not in that feedback loop anymore. It doesn't feel the intensity of a, the first day or the first time. It will sometimes make us think that it's not happening. Now, there are physical things <clears throat> that can confirm this. Like if you practice, like, let's say you get massages or, <clears throat> excuse me, you get massages or you get, uh, uh, you go into the sauna or something you will find like your first few tries that you're just like, oh my goodness, after this, you're just melting. Like your whole body is just like relaxed and you know, you're in this state. You go back again, second time it happens again. You're like, man, I found my thing. And then somewhere in there though, it could be the 10th time, it could be in the 50th time, you're not gonna feel the same way that you did the first time, but is the same thing happening? Physically, yes. Spiritually, no, <laughs> because spiritually what goes on is it's like, that's why we call it the quest. It's like, once you get to one level of the, the degrees of the spine, now it's time to pack your stuff and get ready to ascend again. Now, of course, there is warning around this, meaning like the sages, the masters, et cetera, always explain, this is why they, they talked about like, basically like a Prius version or a low footprint version of your astral being where it doesn't need you got a lot of headroom is that's what i'm saying like it doesn't need this consistent confirmation that it's connected to be very strong it could do that by just looking at a flower 
And then all of a sudden you're just like in this ecstasy. You see what I mean? So they try to back down their senses the same way that if you go without certain things, you have more of a craving for it. Or if you uh, remove certain things like salt and sugar from your diet, your senses go up higher. So you literally need to, like we were showing in those pictures, there's like these bodies and they need to be calibrated. You have to literally actually go in and kind of recalibrate your body to be able to experience that same state again, energetically. And so I trust Ooh. that that makes sense. Again, I, I wanna probably roll back around some vibratory analysis. I know that's available for soul coaches that have ambassador pros, but we're gonna be doing some creative stuff in Discord to kind of suss that out to see how, since we know this normalization process is in place, it's happening to me. It's also the, uh, uh, it's happened to me before. I've had to come back from it. Some pe people think this is uh, burnout, even depression. All those things can kind of look like what normalization really is. Cause you can also get so high that you can maybe fall a little short of achieving that. <laughs> and then it could start appearing like you're never gonna get back to that stage when some, when that's still activated, but something even greater is even opening up, right? So yeah, I trust that that gives you some clarity on you know exactly why, well, I can't say absolutely, but one of the things that you should pay attention to and then what vibratory energetics is gonna do is it's going to show you also where those meters are like how you increase sensitivity or decrease because you know like mm. some will admit that the stimulus is high so high that it's erratic so we got like two different issues some feel bludgeoned where it's like i i just don't feel connected or i don't feel like that space and then some feel overwhelmed i'm just so like activated i can't focus i can't like really ground into anything and i feel like i'm all over the place you see so that's why it's like, okay, those are two extremes. What we're talking about mm -hmm. is bringing in the balance and then being okay also like the, the Zen master, basically like you're okay when nothing's happening too. <laughs> you see what I mean? And mm -hmm. being able to normalize your body back to that because <clears throat> I also found like a lot of vegetarian situation. That's why I'm kind of like practicing balance right now after being a vegetarian for 25 years. It was creating mental stigmas it was creating other stuff that that is also associated when you do anything for 25 years without making changes and transformations in that space also. So our consciousness is always wanting to be entertained in that way. It's the, the bride. And, you know, we got to sometimes go in and clear out the cobwebs to things and repetitious paths that we've been walking because they're now normal and, 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 and go uh, deeper into self. Uh, to the, the to another level of uh, of awareness and awakening, which will always be there. This is exactly mm. why, like, some complain about this. Ah, it looks like there's always a question after a question. I'm like, and then? Because if we're just powering ourselves on questions, then we got infinite fuel. But I'm just serious. Is that, I mean, there is a, a greater and greater of awareness that is going to keep happening as you come into this connection with all of the other things that you've been mentally separated from. So the more you gather the more you gather, the more filled you become, right? But that feeling never stops, you know, on that path, literally the feeling never stops because you're constantly expanding. Um, and, and so, yeah, in, in every way we remove the division components and, but we also are still mindful for this vehicle, which in certain ways, like a semi is in a sim or a simulation. And in that it needs to be maintained. It needs a man, you will right so it's uh, actual instructions to maintaining the vehicle and it ain't the bible right uh, or not in its whole at least in that in that uh way so yeah that's what i got mm. thank you so much that makes sense so basically in a way i've kind of desensitized yeah yeah it happens I, but and it doesn't mean yeah. that you're not there that's the weird part it's like you actually have the power. And I went through this process because I hadn't had a quote unquote experience for a while. And I started like just doing these mental things like, man, I haven't had an experience in a while. I wonder if I need to and then fill in the blank. <laughs> and in this case, for me, it was like maybe I'm doing too much shows or maybe I'm doing, you know, the monkey.
mind is crazy. So he's like crazy. I'll listen to monkey. But anyway, if he could get you in that state, it's like, well, maybe you're doing too much show. Maybe it's time to pull back from this. Maybe it's time to do this. Maybe it's time to do that. The big maybe, right? And so I went to sleep yeah. on it. And that morning, oh my goodness, when the sun rose up, I went into a full blown activation. It just kept going. E and it just kept going, going, and boom, and I broke into all this space that was just like white, pure frequency, like nothing could live there because the frequency was too high. So I went to a whole activation process and did like, boy, I wrote that down in the journal. And then I woke up, which didn't really feel like sleep. And I was like, and then immediately what came to mind is, hey, now, I mean, we can't keep doing this to keep you, <laughs> you know what I mean, serious, because you're like, you need you need this to feel like you're connected, but you're always connected. You don't necessarily need to be flying around the universe at a thousand herds in order to be in this. But, you know, here's something we throw you some, you know what I mean? So just know that you're, you're always in the heart. Right. So that's what it is. Thank you so much for connecting in the space and inspiring that. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Wholeness. All right. Let, uh, let Sean know also if you're looking for vibratory energetics. Okay. Thank you. All right. Wholeness, LV. Thank you for that one. <laughs> right. Tylo May. You may with the double nine. Come on. Wholeness, wholeness, wholeness. Uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I got a reverb. Y'all hear this reverb? <laughs> no, nah, you're good. I, okay. Bet, bet. Um, yeah, let me just breathe into this real quick. I wanted to walk through some words and some of these ideas I was just drawing down, uh, writing down as the message was coming through today or tonight. And I'm going to allow that to kind of navigate me towards my, I guess, the overall, like the question. Um, but like we talked about, like this idea of like characters and archetypes, and, and we spoke about like the Jin and the Naga. And the dogs, you know, the foxes, the werewolves, king, the canine, like, and I've always found it interesting. I think from like the first time, not the first time, but like something that always stuck with me from like listening into some of these transmissions over time has been seven. You've always given this like when you broke down, like how you like you. I love how you go into words and like digging deep into like and, and finding those kind of connective points between like your name and like and like how how our health things kind of appear in our life that kind of direct us in a way or almost seem like they're written in that way and that's kind of the same sentiment I get like when you talk about you know like the thought like you know Michael J Fox and like the, you know these things that line up with the if I'm coming through coming through like with this and um yeah and moving through, we also talked about, uh, you know, just the amount of like material we're exposed to and marketing and like everybody has dreams, like we all got dreams and goals here and like these, you know, these kind of like big ideas. And sometimes in my consciousness, I can find myself like getting caught in those frequencies. And, and we, we uh, Sai was talking about, like, you know, like, or you mentioned when replying to Sai about uh, just the you know, like the frequencies and like how, like there's noise and we get disconnected, we need ground. And, and as I'm kind of going through this in my consciousness, like the, the question comes through, it's like, because what I was getting is like, how do we know where, where our dreams, like in, in these projections that we have, when do, when do we know that, how do we know that they're all? I, 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 I got something know? right now. It's, go for, because, go for, yeah. it, it's because if it's really for you, yeah, it will find you. Mm. That serious, mm. like, like that's how you know, because I had this moment. Okay, I'm gonna tell you exactly the experience, right? Because this is good stuff and we at the end, right? This is quick. So I had this moment where, okay, so I, okay, let me just give you a little backstory. So I really thought or feel like I like film, okay? Like for years, I've been like, okay, I'm gonna end up producing a movie or I'm gonna do a documentary, right? And I've been like really trying to do it and it just never has happened. So I've even kind of made it <clears throat> one of those things like if I finally like get this balanced out with like maintenance with the tribe and the developers and all that kind of stuff, that's what I'm going to next, right? And so I've had this kind of thing in my mind like 
yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go and direct the film next when I finally get my stuff together. Right. And then I, the other day I came in the house and I sat down and I just tried to analyze how far I was from becoming this director I wanted to become. And I just started having this, this presence that was like, is that really what you want to do? Or is that what you think you want to do? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that this still happens as you get older and you get wiser, you're able to still comb through like even your memories and start realizing when those memories were first implanted. And I actually went to that space of where I first started feeling like that I wanted to produce movies, but it was because someone else that was somebody else's desire and dream. You see what I mean? I went all the way back to when I was a kid and I first saw the whole thing and then Goonies and all this kind of stuff, right? But it was somebody else that I ended up going over their house and they had like all this, they had this uh, eight millimeter camera and they were doing all these little films, like kind of like shucks. And so since then I kind of latched onto that person's dream, right? And so anyway, long story short, what happened was I decided to let it go. <laughs> I literally told even Jeanette, I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to make a dream. I, I don't, I don't want to make a movie. I don't want to do any of that. I realized that that's not even my dream. And I need to just stop all of this extra stuff and find my dream. Then the next week I produced that little film y'all just saw. Now, of course, it's no Spielberg, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it's not the Oppenheimer, you know, it's not the creator, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I'm on my way, but meaning that if it's for you though, it starts wanting you to make it. You see yeah. what I mean? And I felt like at a certain point, even though I had kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, I need to get some water, but even at a certain point, because I, I, you know, I was trying to get all this ready for the course. Like first I was playing with the time, but then after a while you start realizing that without storyteller, this would have been impossible because trying to an illustrate 28 minutes of anything <laughs> this complex, <laughs> try it. So anyway, the reality was that I kind of like started, you know, running out of time and things, but I was getting there, but there was, even though I was running out of time, I felt joy coming through. Uh, cause generally sometimes like with the AI God series, it was like, I was running out of time and joy was not coming through. I was feeling like, oh my goodness, this is the, this is the burden. I, I, and so at the end of the day, what I'm telling you is, is that it found me when I decided I didn't want to try to pursue it. And that's exactly what we were talking about earlier about being a magnet. Now you can be in electricity, right? And that's just a whole nother path. That's a whole nother conversation. But as a magnet, you're going to let things come to you. And that's how you know. And then lastly, all of those signs and symbols that you were saying you love so much earlier, those are the ones. Definitely mm -hmm. not one. Generally three, I work in the, with the three, meaning like if I get, if something comes across, I need to see it three times or I'm not paying attention because I just got way too much going on to get like that one thing and be like, oh my goodness, it's because of that. Like, no, nah, that's not how it flies. If it's not done three times in a matrix for me, that's my rules. I'm not saying that's across the board with everybody, but that's my rule. If it ain't three times, I can't listen because to do it three times, it takes you to be able to tap into other things that are not normally accessible by someone who's practicing foolishness. So what I mean is that three times is almost inaccessible to manifest in my reality something that would lead me into a direction that I should not go. It's not meant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's love, the, that's the love. check base. We got the check checkpoint system because we ain't just we. And yeah. the other thing, we're not on that other side either. Where it's like, oh, just whatever. No. 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 <laughs> you be so deep in the wolf's mouth. No, I'm joking. But serious, it's like you you can't just. There's discernment. Like the only to me, one of the most powerful books in the Bible doesn't seem like it belongs to the Bible and it's the book of Jude. It's only almost one page and it explains things that are never talked about in the Bible. Like when Moses went up on the Mount and you know, he was, you know, tempted by the devil. Who the hell wrote that book? Cause most Moses died on that mountain. <laughs> so either the devil wrote the book you see what I mean? So there are accounts in Jude, if you look at it, where there's got to be another book. But anyway, this Jude 
speaks on discernment being the way. Like that what's going to happen next is you won't be able to trust really any of the stuff that you're reading. And we just went over that time, right? Like they didn't even have the printing press and all that kind of stuff. You won't be able to trust anything that you're reading. You will only have your discernment. And then there's laws about this discernment. And it talks about like the weather, like if we can look outside and tell that it's going to rain, so too we can look in our lives and know what's going to happen next. So there's like this, basically this initiation into discernment, which is accompanied by maturity. So, you know, if you're maturing yourself properly and cultivating yourself properly, your discernment levels are increasing. And then it's really easy. And this stuff is like, I'm not saying it's like, oh, it's so hard to achieve. It's like after a while, you start realizing like most stuff falls in a certain bin anyway. And then the stuff that sticks out is really the things that you realize are a part of uh, what you what you need to be having in your vibration. But until that doesn't is not as until that is uh, super clear, then, you know, we practice this discernment and then we set up our own personal systems that gives us the confirmation of the directions that we should be going. That, that direction is true north, would you say? Yeah, I mean, it's in like, the heart, right? Say, so like it's like, a, it's like, it's, it's really, you know, if you can trust yourself, it's a feeling, but you know, all of these things, like, even when you say you trust yourself, it's like, you know, something that had me on the film thing for a minute. And I realized it wasn't my idea technically, but it was something that I latched onto because there was a resonator there. Is that what I'm really supposed to do? So this comes up to question. So you're just now doing more internal sweeping. You're like really looking at your thoughts and ideas and really, um, with it kind of sorting it out. Like they would say like sorting your Royal Oats, like you're really looking at your creations and your brides and all these things that you got going on inside of you and seeing if that, is, is this still the stuff that you are agreeing on? And at times you can offload so many things and be still having that in your mind until you do that. And then when you're done, you feel a lot more lighter, you feel a lot more clear, and you also feel like that you have a, you have a direction, right? So if there's, if there's something there that you're not necessarily achieving, try moving it out of the way and see if it comes back. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I love it. It's it's like perfect. It's honestly like and, and that question too that wanted to come through. I feel like thank you again for that the response. It just it's it's confirmation and but like that question that came through my my consciousness it was like, can you and you into electronics? So I'm curious to like actually before I asked Chat Chat GPT this, I was going to just throw it out there. Like, can you hijack something that's grounded? Like, could you hijack into something that's grounded? It happens every day. <laughs> like mm. people. Okay. So let's just, we talked about this It's basically that you have something priceless. Mm. Like no amount of money can really buy it. Like your sanity, your happiness, all these different things, like your resolve, your courage, all those things are priceless. So something will try. So it's also like they're not only are they priceless, they, you can't steal them in the same way that you can steal like a car or you can steal somebody's money. You literally need to convince the person to give you their happiness in that way, right? Like for the dark siders, like they need to get in this person's consciousness. So that wedging, which, you know, they show the pine cone in this case, you know, it's a wedge in you can dig a wedge into the reality or wedge into the aura. This is still contingent upon the person basically lowering their shields or being susceptible to ideals of that they could be weakened. And that that's why magic and stuff is very dangerous to play around with because it doesn't work if you don't believe in it. And I'm talking about like, in this case, nefarious magic, division magic. It doesn't work if you don't believe in it. But that also means even people who practice what they call light magic have a tendency to be the most susceptible to it because they believe in magic. And the sheer fact that they believe in light magic makes dark magic exist in that way. And they end up in this dichotomy of a battle between good and evil in their minds. You see what I mean? So one thought begets another. One step takes one further down on the path. And so it's like just navigating your vehicle in a way where you're conscious of the moves that you're making in the sacredness of what you're doing, that you're walking through a reality that even though just like the bodies, they have a GUI over them right now, they have basically a skin over them that cloaks who's really underneath. This is why when you use certain substances, you can see what a person is and you see other things on them. 
you know, sometimes it can end a relationship, <laughs> but, but it's there. Like if even if another person was there and you ask them, hey, do you see that? They'll, they'll confirm with specific substances that, yeah, I can see that on them too. So in that way, this reality is hiding who we are, but that same, because everything works in a certain balance, that same hiding has us conflicting less than we normally would when we know like, so for instance, a lot of this is, is based on nature. So some humans don't like each other naturally, just like a cat will always try to attack a snake. You see what I mean? So when you put the skin over that being, everybody kind of looks similar enough to where that doles out a little bit. So the differences don't become what we're arguing about as much <laughs> but still under the skin as they say there's still that i don't i don't like i don't i'm not i'm not connected to i'm not a part of and that's why i was saying the ultimate in this is to realize that the archons are your organs and when you really understand the whole archonic story you either now are like okay well i thought that these were the bad guys or you actually accept that the conditions that your organs are in at times through the abuse and the things that happened in the past have created a certain energy. And when that energy is collected or collective, it creates a certain kind of being. But when you have a healthy heart, when you have a healthy liver, then that's, that's what we're talking about here. But when you have a, 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 a liver that is it's dysfunctional, then that's when we say like the darker side of an archon, that's what you would really be experiencing. And see, these kind of things like for a, for a person, they're going to be experiencing all this personal. Like when one of your organs is failing, it causes distress, lack of sleep. It puts more stress on another organ. So you see, so all this is a personal experience. So while, you know, yeah. one will try to find these things externally, and I don't doubt that they'll find some hairy goat somewhere with with human legs. But what I'm saying, this has far more use within figuring out where all of these metaphors and, and uh, uh, acted out animated symbols are really inside of your, your, your more refined aspects of your being. So that way, like a king or queen is going to handle the matters at the top. I'm not going to talk to everybody on the low end about something that I could delegate on high and so in that way you you don't look at the physical reality anymore like people being the problem and now you're blaming trump and on illuminati and the matrix and cia and all this shit. you see what i mean because all you're doing is giving really giving more power to that they exist just as a shadow to anything is there however it's not where things get handled and technically it's not how you elevate yourself to remove yourself from any kind of governance in relation to that, right? So that's what we, we talk about cosmic law and when we get into these things, but they first are established internally through that wholeness, all is self, understanding. These things that we say, like there's only like three of them, they actually when really pulled apart because they didn't just come from like me, like, oh, I'm gonna create this word. It was all through that same, like tell them this and me being a conduit for just that like i want to really assist i want to give you something that assists you and takes you to another level that's what i want to be known for and because i do that from that space it allows that to drop into your lap you get it and then you do it the same thing with it so yeah i don't want to get you know too long-winded about this but it's just that process of re realizing that we're cultivating i say this some people may doubt it i say you can never create anything greater than what you are and i still hold to that so the greater that you become all of the things that you create <laughs> from whether it's with the fusion models or whether it's actual children or whether it's businesses and all the other things and creative faculties that are inside of the space, they will always be like these templates. That's the best way of seeing it. A template of your current condition while you were creating that. Now, remember, a creation doesn't stop there. <clears throat> it needs to be nourished. That's why we have the guardians. That's why we look at every single child as our own. And we try to nourish them and shield them and protect them until they can do that same thing for themselves.
So yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you could obviously see that I'm very passionate about this. This is, you know, <laughs> it's been about a while, but I trust that you got some great clarity. And I also, you know, appreciate, uh, you know, you being clear yourself and being able to ask these questions. No, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it's a blessing to be in this space. Thanks for holding space. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Uh, wholeness. Wholeness. See how lips side. No doubt. All right. Oh, so we got up. our sister Courtney Shabazz. Woo! There she goes. She ain't in the space. She in our hearts. What's up? This is a good way to bring this thing into a crescendo. <laughs> wholeness. Wholeness. And uh, you know I'm coming with a poem, so Here we go. Hold I just on want to again spotlight. say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's always a synchronicity; it's always consistent. And let me just get into the poem. Another synchronicity: the reality will always silently scream what needs to be seen. There is truth in the silence. Have you listened to the world? Contaminated tantra. The desire to rule, the masters of the realm trying to distract and confuse, but we know to discern the deluge. It's not about who will win and who will lose, it's what we choose. Sovereignty. The all is within, falling for their lies is the greatest sin. You know the truth, all is self. Y'all gonna all have to unmute on that. That's how we going out of this thing. We going in. What's up? I love you, poet. I love everyone. Wholeness. Wholeness. Send a love to everybody. Just remember, we're within. Inside of yourself, you'll find everything. Giving thanks to the family. Speak to everyone soon.